Mason, are you always looking for money to give to charity, but you can never do it because you're a bad bloke? <laughs> You've nailed me. <laughs> okay, good. You've yeah. nailed me to the wall with that incredibly <laughs> accurate, mean description, but you are correct, yes. Well, so again, it's that it's that time of year, Mason, where we're going to do our, our annual charity campaign drive. To make up for all the bad things we've done in the last financial year. Exactly. It's the perfect opportunity to wipe the slate clean and then give us free reign until this time next year. <laughs> But uh, so this year, the, the charity we've picked is Movember, which I didn't know isn't apparently a very well-known international charity. Mm-hmm. It's big in Australia, uh, where it's basically, it, it's, it's, um, it's a charity that looks after men's mental health. Mm-hmm. And obviously the idea behind men's mental health is that that filters through all the community when there's good mental health all around. It like can decre- decrease, you know, uh, like suicide, domestic violence decreases, mm-hmm. all those mm-hmm. sorts of things. All, all good things, Mason. Yeah. And traditionally uh, in November, yes. we all grow a mo. Yes. Hence the, hence the thing. But Movember runs all year round. The Movember Foundation is, yep. it's all year. They never stop, never unlike stop. us, only once. <laughs> But uh, so what we've done, we've done the same thing as last year. We have set up a donation page, which, which I'll link below. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a complicated link, but uh, so it's, 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 I won't read it out because you won't remember. It's in the description. Oh, I'll remember. Yeah, you'll remember it, but I don't, I trust you, Mason. No, There's... I'd have lost the thread already. <laughs> okay. I won't remember anything you say in the next couple of minutes. So I'm going to forget. And the idea is the same as last year where you, if you donate, you're allowed to ask a question and that's going to, mm. that's going to um, open up a few doors, Mason. For oh listeners. yes. Uh, the first one is, as, as a lot of people know, we are doing a, uh, a panel show on March 25th. Live, live, live. It's, well, it's live if you're there, but it's being recorded to then be put up later. Pre-recorded, pre-recorded, pre-recorded. Yeah, exactly. So we thought about live streaming it, but it's just kind of, it's just another thing that could kind of go wrong on the day and I don't want to deal with any of that. It's not my problem, quite <laughs> frankly. But but it will go up. But if you put a question, also, there, how do you how do you edit? How do you bloody live stream and play? You're gonna it's, you're gonna take a while to to edit the 360 camera. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely, I know what's happen exactly. There. So uh, so the idea is that if you ask a question, it might be asked on the uh, on the panel. Mm-hmm. Any questions that asked won't ask on the panel. We're gonna do also a private Q and A like we did last year. Yes, we are, and that will only be available to people who who donate. You don't have to ask a question. That's true. But the the question you don't even have to donate. It'd be no, nice. That's right. You can continue to listen to the show for free. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. That's it. And I think the say like the rule applies the same for our Patreon. The, the idea of donation is if the money kind of fell out of your pocket and you and you didn't notice but you know but if you're gonna you know if you if you want to put a little bit more than that that would also be, be also be if you've always wanted to know why i hate your brother <laughs> a question i answered on last year's q a yeah but not everybody got to it so a lot of people also ask if we can put that back up I'll, i will also make yeah, that one available up, yeah. uh for for people who who donate now there's a few there's a couple of steps well there's one step in particular that you need to take to make sure that you get the email with the private link for the q a in mm-hmm. it there's a there's a box that's already ticked and it says um, include my name and email address in in the do- include my name and email address in the donation notification email sent to the supporter. Which base that's donation notification. That's right. It's fun to say. We're not using it for anything. It's just so if we have your email, we can just send it to you because mm. because uh, th- that way we have the receipt, we have proof that people have donated. Last year we had to do a bit of a workaround. I don't really want to do that this year because it was kind of a pain in the ass for everybody. Not for if, me. Not for you, no. But if that box is ticked, we can email you straight to you, you yeah. directly. Mm-hmm. And often we like everything we kind of make is available to everybody. Yeah. This is the only time of year when that is, that is not the case. That's true. So yeah. the Q and A only goes to people who 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 have donated to men's mental health. The November. best of the best. That's right. Exactly. Uh, is there anything else that needs to be said about that? No, that'll do it. It can be about getting started on a podcast. It can be a, a personal question, I guess, that we might answer. I suppose, depending <laughs> on what it is. Uh, it could be, yeah, it could be YouTube. It could be anything. Any, it can be related because the panel is going to have a whole lot of other podcasts on it. It can be related to those people as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that that's that's kind of the idea. Any anything you wanna you wanna ask, and we'll get to as many as we can. If we don't do it on the panel, we'll try and do we'll try and do it after in the private Q and A. Last year, mm. we and by we I mean neither of us, but mm. the listeners, the weekly wackadoos raised over forty thousand. That's right. And we put up a we were like we put up the the goal was fifteen hundred. I think yeah. It like was, wouldn't yeah. it be amazing if we got fifteen hundred bucks and then. Bang. Yeah, I was like, it was like a day. We're instant, like, oh, this yeah. is a trick. Yeah, that's right. This is a, this is a. Oh, do we owe them fifteen hundred bucks? What's? <laughs> and I've just looked at the the, the page here. The, the goal is actually forty thousand dollars. Which look, it's a bit ambitious. I didn't set it up, <laughs> as you know, my partner did. But you know, we'll we'll give it a crack. And if we get we get near it, we get near it. If we no, any amount of money is great. Also, Absolutely. I should point out, November kind of filtered down the money to different charities as well. That's true. They're a big organization, but mm. they kind of it also goes to the little to the little guy as well. Not us. 
We get zero. We're very little guys, though. <laughs> That's right. But we get zero. We get my, z- my feet. My little feeties are hanging off this couch. <laughs> we both have little feet. Yeah. Uh, but um. But yeah. So the, the money goes straight to the. It doesn't go through us. It goes straight to the, yeah. the charity. If everybody yeah. donated one dollar. Yeah. Well, yeah. We get about anywhere between two fifty and three fifty thousand downloads an episode. <laughs> is that yeah. right? Let's not shoot that, that high. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If everybody well, don't downloaded a uh, shiny. I was gonna say saw buck. That's twenty bucks. Uh, if everybody donated, that would work. <laughs> everybody d- donated a bloody quarter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you can use like PayPal. You can use, I think, you can use your credit card, Amex, and there's a bunch of op- options here. Cash or check. Ooh. I don't know why you would do that, but you can apparently, or whatever you want. Oh, if you if you want to if you want to donate using one of those giant stone coins they use on Easter <laughs> Island, you're gonna do that. It's fine. Be a little inconvenient for everyone, but, but that's we'll, okay. Yeah, they'll take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. We, we should get on with the show. Mason. Let's get on with the show. What? The show. Okay, you said Gilmanya. That's what I heard. That's my new catchphrase. Oh, okay, it's very good. I don't know how, we'll get that on a t-shirt. It's it's man being drowned in a fish tank. <laughs> Weighed down by an Easter Island coin. Yeah. All right. Red hot comic book movie news. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, official podcast of comicbookmovie.com, where we talk movies, comics, TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my cousin, Nick May. I'm here, too. How was your week? What have you been up to? Uh, I've been battling smoke detectors, as you know. Oh, tell us about that. <laughs> it's, it's not a great story. The smoke detectors... I, I disagree. <laughs> I think it is a great story. I'm going to breeze through it. Okay. But uh, basically, the smoke detectors have been going off in my house, you know, when they run out of battery and they make the beep. Mm-hmm. I found out it's every 40 seconds because I've been timing it. So during the night, you put you put tissue boxes on your feet. You haven't cut any of your nails. You've stayed in your house Howard Hughes style, That's and right. you're counting the seconds in between beeps on a smoke detector. <laughs> it's been happening for like a week, and I got the first one, and I'm mm-hmm. like, sweet. And then during the night, I can hear it. And initially, I thought it was still beeping, even though I pulled the battery out. And I thought that I was going mad. And then last night, I'm like, I've had enough of this. So I went to grab the one. I'm like, it must still have a charge in it. So I went downstairs to <laughs> to grab it and just peg it across the road. Shouldn't do that. Keep your smoke detectors. They're important. But then I, there was another beep and I realized, oh no, there's another one in my house that I didn't know about because I rent this place. So I went upstairs and I went to go and grab it. And then it's like, it's like 15 feet in the air. And I'm like, I cannot get that. Uh-huh. I don't have a ladder. It's three in the morning. So today I went and bought a ladder. Yeah. I got it. I pulled the you battery. You had a problem. You found the solution. <laughs> That's right. I pulled the battery. Comic books, everybody. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> No, no, your tale of domestic woe must come first. And then I'm like, sweet relief. And then I heard the beep again. 40 seconds later. 40 seconds later, because I timed it. And I realized that the house next door to be, because it's water, we share a wall. Nobody's living there at the moment because they're leasing it and their smoke detectors run out of batteries. So there's no, you Nobody can't go around. Can, I, you can't go around. You can't knock on the door and be like, hey, neighbor, can I have a, can I have a cup of sugar? And also check your smoke detectors. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been going mad. Yeah. When you got here, I told you that. I very frantically told you that story because I looked out your back, like to, into your backyard, and I noticed on on the table in your backyard there are a series of smoke detectors <laughs> just sitting on a table. Like that a I picking. pulled off the roof. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because I because I wanted to make sure that the one I was hearing wasn't <laughs> the ones in my. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Mason, I also had a fun time with technology this week. Okay, Would you like on. to hear about please, it? Please, please. I went to a wedding yesterday. It was great. Great. Yep. Had a good old time. But I hadn't been to a wedding in a while. And like, there was so many, there were so many cameras. Like, there was, it, they were covering every single angle. There was a camera on a jib. What? Apparently, the the, the, the happy couple had won like a camera package. Oh, like, that's they, expensive. Yeah, that. yeah. So so they brought all these people in, and there was this camera on the jib, and there was all these you know people with with like bandoliers of cameras, <laughs> yeah. like like a crossover leather I patch, never like that. like a bandito, yeah. and he had two cameras. <laughs> but then there was there was one guy over in the corner, and he had like a he was holding like a big controller with a big monitor on it. And I'm like, oh, he must be the director. Like, it, this this system must be so big that he has to like do live switching and stuff <laughs> right, like yeah, that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of interesting. And then the car pulls up with the, the beautiful bride, and the the harp plays there, and she's like, ding, 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 ding. she's doing the bridal waltz. And then all of a sudden, you hear a brrrr. and I look over, and the guy with the big monitor thing. It turns out that's a drone remote. <laughs> He's a drone pilot, and he started up a drone as the as the the bridal party is entering. So I'm just hearing, oh, and everybody's like, "What? What's, what and is that?" And it, 
I don't know if they tested it or not, but they're at no. It doesn't matter how. Like if it's a hundred feet in the air, you can still hear the. Yeah, drone. yeah, yeah. You can still hear the drone of the drone. The drone of the drone. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. but then I'm like, well, you know, that covers an avenue that you don't normally get in wedding photography, which is people looking directly up into the air, <laughs> going, "Hey, what's that?" Oh, it's a drone. <laughs> So that's amazing. So if you want to ruin your wedding, <laughs> yeah. hire a drone and and a harp player, <laughs> yeah, that you could drown out with a mm-hmm. drone. That's great. Which also point out as well, we'll this, this the show starting now. But uh, <laughs> uh, Andrew Levins, who has a podcast called Serious Issues, a comic book co- podcast. That's right. He came. I nearly in, said Codcast. Codcast, all about fish. But he no, he came in the other day, um, and we recorded an episode of Serious Issues, which is going up the same day this goes up. It's yeah, on Monday individually. Individually, yes. And you also did one the last week, week, the week before, maybe two mm. weeks before. Did you get mostly good issues or mostly? I bad got some issues? pretty good ones. I you, got almost you got all garbage. Bad. So I got a week of garbage. Yeah. I'll link. I'll link that below. But he's a great bloke, and he's, it's a great podcast. And yeah. um, maybe you check it out if you like comic books and you listen to this and you like these guys are okay, but you're hardcore into comics. This is the issues. guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, Mason. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl was last week. Yes, it was. It's old news, but did anything stand out from it for you? Ah. Uh, Any standout TV spots, trailers? Let me Did think. Captain Jack Sparrow covered in mud appeal He's got, to you? What, what's he got now? Has he got knuckle tattoos or something? That's I don't his know, new man. thing. I, maybe you always had him. Mm. Yeah, but did you see it? No. <laughs> so there's only one shot of him and he's kind of covered in mud. Uh-huh. I think it's because they're like, Johnny Depp's in a bit of a... Uh, he's, He's in actor's prison at the moment. A yeah, little right. bit, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. He's going kind of, he might be going that Mel Gibson route at some point. But uh, we see, what's his name? The guy, well, Lando Bloom's back and he's covered in barnacles or whatever. So everybody's covered in mud and barnacles yeah. this time around. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Sure. Pirates of the Caribbean, mud and barnacles. Yeah. Not as sexy as you remember. <laughs> and what's his name? Javier Bardem has underwater hair. It's, it always looks like he's underwater. Huh. You know, because they oh, they got to have like a... The, the bad pirate has to have like a weird supernatural thing. It has to be a fish monster or a Jeffrey That's Rush true, yeah. skeleton man. Well, you can't go backwards at this point, no, can you? No, you can't, can you? Can't be, you can't be like, in this t- this one, the enemies are just bureaucracy. Well, they have been bureauc- bureaucracy also. Bureaucracy. No, I mean <laughs> even further, like they're trying to get the boat license back. <laughs> okay, right. Jack Sparrow's just standing in line at the... you got too many masts on the ship, Jack Sparrow. Maximum of three. Mm. Yeah. Any any interest in this? Uh, kind of. Because I haven't seen, like I've missed yeah. a couple, so maybe... You know what? Don't watch him going into this. That's, yeah. Mm. You don't, you know, you will be burnt by the time you get around to it. Right, so yeah. maybe this one will be good and the only way that that'll be the case for you is if you don't watch the Do we know the plots, plot of this one? Captain Jack's got a... There's Did he a get the wrong up. side of some sort of yeah, supernatural that, exactly, sea creature monster exactly, man? Okay. Yeah. So the, the same. Great. The same. So just think about the same and then mm-hmm. that's it. Fantastic. Uh, Guardians had a, had a, had a trailer. About a one minute thirty trailer. That's right. It yeah, was. Mm-hmm. looked pretty good. Fantastic. Some more yeah. funny, funny spots. The thing is, uh, the um, they tested it at Marvel, and it's the only movie there ever to get a hundred percent rating. Yeah, right. Yeah, which is um, the Avengers got a high nineties, uh-huh. which is good, but so did Iron Man three. So which way does this go? <laughs> See, that's exactly it. I think. Yeah. Look, I, I the hype train. Yeah, totally. I don't know if it's... Yeah, I, I mean, and also I should point out, they don't get um, the general public for this. They get friends and family of people who work at Marvel. Right, okay. So, which is, you know, helps keep the secret secret or whatever. I don't think this is good or bad news. I mean, it's not bad news, is it, obviously? Right. But uh, I don't think it's indicative of the final product necessarily. Who's going to say bad? Yeah. it's a There's a raccoon. It's good, isn't it? No, I mean, who's going to say bad? Because if you work for your, your dad works for Marvel, you're not going to say it's bad, are you? I mean, I'm, I'm presuming it's anonymous. That's the way you'd want to do it. Now, nah, but you can always tell because of handwriting. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I used to work uh, my my last job before I did this amazing whatever this is we do. I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> yeah, the sinking ship. The sinking that we're ship. On. <laughs> Um, there'd always be like a questionnaire to be like, you know, to be like, well, rank your workplace. What, what do you, and it was anonymous, but there was like two guys who worked there and it was like male of male. And, and so and yet there was a male and female box. I'm like, well, I can't be truthful on this. I mean, it was, oh, I, I, see. I enjoyed the job they anyway. Segregated they segregated it. They segregated it. Yeah. so weird. Yeah. And it was like age bracket. And I'm like, well, I'm the only one in this age bracket who's male. Do you right. know what I mean? So it's not really anonymous, Did is it? you consider dotting all your eyes with little hearts and putting it in the girl box? <laughs> I should have, in should hindsight. Have, yeah. That was electronic, so Perfect what do you crime. do? Yeah. It was an online questionnaire, mate. It's, a, it's a But thing. you had to click girl or boy. Yeah. That's so weird. It, didn't, it wasn't girl or boy. It was male or female. No, it was it's girl just, or boy. Girl. <laughs> and the girl had a little heart next to it, yeah. and the boy had a saxophone, which, as we all know, is the universal symbol for being a boy. Manly virile power <laughs> playing the saxophone. You're right. Did you see the... Oh, Ghost in the Shell. 
That's one I remember. Okay, yeah. That looked great. Face Off? Yes. There's apparently a new trailer for that. I think by the time this goes up, there might be a new trailer Ooh. as well. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I was like, there's something on the tip of my tongue, a property that is going to be better than the original. Oh. And people are going to be loath to admit it, Yes, but it's going to be better. Did you say that to me in our private lives? Maybe, yeah, but I think it's this. Yeah. I think this is going to be better than the the anime. Yep. And people are going to be like, this can't, this, the original's a classic and you can't beat it for... I think this is going to be better. Didn't you watch it recently? Some of it. <laughs> the voice acting's so flat in it. Uh. It's just this weird pauses sure. in like, the audio. <laughs> yep, yep, I okay, get yeah. It's hard to listen to. Okay, sure. You know? I can't understand that. I can't mm. relate, but sure, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't disagree with you. And for the most part, it looks shot for shot identical. Yeah. What we've seen so far, except for there's a bit where this geisha woman robot like turns, into a, turns into a, some sort of scorpion, scorpion <laughs> spider thing, which yeah. I don't remember from the original. Yeah. Maybe that's in one of the. Maybe that's either. in the sequel, or maybe that's in the the standalone complex. The maybe the, it's in the prequel, the Scorpion Geisha. Maybe it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's a reference to the Scorpion King, Mason. I get it. Which is a prequel to the Mummy for those people who not the Tom Cruise one. The old, the the classic yeah. the Mummy, but not the classic the classic <laughs> the Mummy from the thirties. The Brendan Fraser classic. The nineteen ninety nine one, which is a classic. Mm-hmm. It's a great movie. Did you read that article in why Brendan Fraser doesn't get work anymore? Uh no. Maybe don't. <laughs> Was it depressing? Kinda. But he's not. Is it because he's a bad bloke? No. Or is it I just like he just, aged out of it? I think he aged out of it, and he he. He was in that position in Hollywood where you sort of... He had abs. He definitely had abs. Yeah. But also we have to... Oh, did he though? Yeah, George of the Jungle. Oh, yeah, good point. I think it's the point... Thank he, you. He was... Yeah, all right. He, he got into that sort of position where you can say yes to everything. Like there's a constant uh, okay, stream yeah, of work yeah. and you'll... And which can go either way. Like the Samuel Nick Cage L, position. Yeah, yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. Like yeah. if you, you can... And if people like everything you're in... Yeah. You your career just just keeps and going. And Samuel L. Jackson can always fall back on a Quentin Tarantino movie or an Avengers film. Yeah, or something he'll like always that. get one. Yeah. yeah, but I think with Brendan, like Brendan Fraser, like he just kept doing everything. Yeah, and then he did Furry Animals or Furry Vengeance. Furry, yeah, Furry Vengeance. Yeah. yeah, and I think what happened is eventually the returns dried up on him. Even like, and it wasn't his fault. It's just the movies were bad. Whose fault was it? The movies. The movies. Okay, yeah. I blame the movies. Okay, good. The movies are kind of bad and the returns are right. And then it's like, well, you're not making us any more money, Brendan Fraser, so we're not going to yeah. cast you in things. Okay. It's like Cuba Gooding Jr. He'll be Brutal. back. Yeah, probably. Well, he, 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 he did was the OJ the, thing, yeah, yeah. which I haven't seen, which is apparently amazing. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Yes. Now, I don't need to read. Thank you, Mason, no for problem. saving me that. What are we talking about? Uh, Stranger Things 2. Season two has a trailer. Oh, yes. Looks good. Did you see it? Didn't see it. Big ominous monster in the sky like the mist. Ooh. Yeah. Looks good. Love I'm well it. on board. You see mm. Ghostbuster outfits. And Love, horror, supernatural stuff with mist in it. You know it, mate. The mist is a great movie, I think. Or it's no. just got the, is it? No. I really enjoyed it. The ending's brutal. Yeah. Show it. If you've got a very sensitive partner, show it to them. <laughs> <'Cause> the- <laughs> Apropos of nothing. <laughs> because it's got a brutal ending. <laughs> Okay, Mason, we've got to talk about the Batman because there's so many of the Batman. Oh, Unless so, you got any more Super Bowl stuff or whatever. Uh, it's like a week ago now. There was a Transformers the last night. Yeah, whatever. TV spot again. Yep. You know what? The one thing I Oh, they've got baby the, Dinobots. They're that's really, what I, that was the boom! question. Because it looked like... A gen- it would look like either a generic Decepticon because you know they're sort of just grey and grey and-, and brown and could be anything, but it also looked like kind of a dragon coming out kind yeah, of thing. Okay, so that's a baby Dinobot. Yeah, well, I know they're selling the toys at least. Yep. Because this one, you also see they've got like a they got a, like a little BB-8 style. It's called Wheelie or something as well. Oh. And I I suspect, and I might be wrong. I think. They knew Star Wars was called the Last Jedi, and they called this the Last Night. Wow! Because last time, because they called Age of Extinction on the back of Age of Ultron. Wow! And I genuinely think they went, well, that's the hot title for this year. So what they've what they've done essentially? I might be wrong. No, what they've done is they've they've seen that they released Transformers, and then the Asylum legendary low budget terrible movie making yeah. Asylum released Transmorphers yes. and successfully tricked a whole bunch of grandmas <laughs> into buying that DVD for their children. Correct. So they've gone, well, if it worked for them, maybe it'll work for us. Let's just move this up the chain. Absolutely. And, and fake like we're a sequel <laughs> to a <laughs> better movie. <laughs> In a better series, yeah. Mm. Oh, amazing. Good on them, I guess. Good on them, I guess. Pricks. Uh, the Batman. There's oh, up- yeah. There's updates. So what I heard... 
I heard, what well, got? so Affleck was out. We knew what that. What do you got, Mason? Affleck was out. We knew that. He's out. And then I heard, much like The Flash, we heard that the Batman needs a page run, one rewrite. Right. Rewrite. Rewrite. <laughs> They need to wheel over it. Yep. Yeah. Start again. Mm. Yeah, go on. Which doesn't mean, as we've learned, that they just have to rewrite page one. It no. means page one and all the remaining you gotta pages. You've got to wheel over it. That's so it's, right. You cannot use soaking. it. Soaking. <laughs> it's just soaking. Um, so that's obviously, that's not generally good news. Yeah, but then... But then, yes. But then I heard that... Uh, Somebody on the inside was like, "No, it's fine. It's a great script." What? Yeah, well, it came through Variety, which are generally yeah. a good, um, yeah, good source. But they said that yeah, Warner Brothers are apparently very happy with it, and it's Chris Terrio who did Batman Superman, and is that right? Is that is that, is that the idea? Is yeah, maybe, I'm, maybe. Is that what I'm saying? Maybe. How do you fall on in? What do you think though? Do you think any of that is? Well, I I heard that the. That, you know, they said the script was bad. Yeah. And then they were like, this guy says it's good. And he was the guy who broke this other news quite recently. And he's very reliable. Right. I think what they've done is they've gone to that guy and said, hey, you know, we gave you that Help scoop earlier. Us. Yeah. <laughs> we gave you that scoop earlier. Could you now go and, and you owe us. So how about you go and tell everybody that the script is great. So you think that's more likely than the script being actually good. Yes. Like, <laughs> legitimately good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, we should point the out... The Batman script is reportedly pleasing everyone, says <laughs> Slash Film. Shut up, Slash Film. I don't think there was. I don't think it came from them, did it? Were they the original source? No, I don't think so. But shut up, Slash yeah, Film. Yeah, shut up. I've got a quote here. It relates to Deathstroke being the villain. So the story for the Batman... Okay, the orig- just, Justin Kroll, the Variety reporter who broke the news about Bat- Ben Affleck not directing the Batman. Oh, he says, okay. He says, uh, everyone at Warner Brothers... Are very happy with it. There were some names, but I only recognise Ben Affleck. So. Sure, I know. I think there were some Warner Brothers executives or Chief I'm Content wrong. Officer Toby Emmerich. Oh, we should get one of them. A Chief, chief Content, content Officer. officer. Yeah. That sounds. Im- mm. No, we want a Cheap Content Officer. <laughs> That's actually true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Send your resumes to whatever our email address <laughs> is. Uh, uh, so the story for the I got a quote here about the original script, which uh-huh. apparently was to include uh, Deathstroke as the main villain, which we yeah. kind of knew because. Joe Manganello, Manganello. Yeah. You remember there was that test footage of him that showed up, and he's apparently he's, he's doing some katana training, getting ready. Now, if they move the shooting date of this, yeah. does that mean potentially he's out? No, he says he's starting training soon, oh. regardless. But he also, I think he said that also because he likes to be ready. They're saying t- 2019 for this now, obviously, mm-hmm. like it won't be ready for next year. Uh, and there was apparently going to be some other villainous appearances by characters, including the Joker. Uh, and Jared Leto apparently is, uh, was softening on his stance and appears to be interested in, in returning, and they're not sure whether that part will be for the Batman or Gotham City Sirens. Okay, uh, sure. So, mm-hmm. you know, he got he got burnt. Yeah, he's, right? Do you think he, he wants a shot at redemption, or do you think he's like, I'm done? Yeah, because he wants to be the greatest Joker. He won't be. <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's going to give it the good old college try, though. Yeah, good on him, man. Yeah. I mean, because, look, I don't think... I, I did a whole video on it, but I think the reason it's not very good is because... There was they didn't build a proper story around him and they just let him kind of pinwheel and, and yeah. it was amazing and magnetic on the day and everybody was transfixed. <laughs> but but then when you go to edit it into a narrative, you're like, we can't use this because he's just doing the jack off motion and putting his tongue out. Or <laughs> yeah, right. what, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I think he's definitely capable. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that was me. I'd probably cut my losses. But I, but I don't need. <laughs> I don't want to be the greatest actor in the cut world. Cut your losses. Take all the wardrobe they gave you. Yep. Keep all the weird tuxedos. <laughs> Grow your eyebrows back. Yep. That's right. And so now, director wise, it's been confirmed. It's Matt Reeves. Right. Uh, it's but it's probably Matt Reeves. Okay. Right. Who's done the Planet of the Apes movies? Now He's, he wrote the screenplay for Under Siege Two. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> On a train? Are you and, kidding me? And the Paul Bearer. They had David Schwimmer. It's a David Schwimmer. <laughs> I don't have anything to say about that. It's fair. Yeah, okay. Well, he directed it. He wrote and directed it. Okay. Yeah. Look, he's. I think he's great. Yeah. I really enjoyed the Apes films, you know. So, uh, I mean, the, uh, the the guys who are doing Infinity War did You Mean Dupree. So, you know. That's you can, you usually can, very you true, can, yeah. You can obviously, you know, yeah, no, improve. I uh, Co-creator of Felicity. Sure. Mm. I didn't watch it. No, it's okay. I heard that when she cut her hair, people weren't happy, though. They were like, That's true, this isn't yeah. the Felicity I fell in love with. That's right. Yeah. We had two seasons of that beautiful long head Felicity and then it's a nightmare. But, uh, yeah, what do you think of that? The Matt Reeves. Yeah, great. Like, oh, he's not like that. a Chris Nolan or whatever, obviously. Yeah. Like, he's not that level of auteur. That's true. But, but he did direct Cloverfield, I think. 
Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, he did too, which, yeah. is, which is pretty solid. And that's kind of, the, you know, that, that was fun and inventive. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I don't disagree. No, I think I think there are, t- considering how late in the day this is yep. and how many and how badly this has kind of fallen apart, Yeah, yeah. it's, it's a good get. Yeah, totally. Like, that's a solid choice. And, uh, yeah, in Planet of the Ace movies, he's going to demand good effects, I would imagine. I would imagine if you like, can't, you can't go can back. Can you render that again? They could bring in Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely Finally. Could. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, it's great. I think it's a good it's a good choice. I should also we've got some Marvel news here. I just want to quickly point out that Doctor Strange this week, uh, on the back of opening in Japan, outgrossed Man of Steel. Is that good? That's amazing. I mean, it's a Superman film against a character that nobody knew about a well, year ago. Well, that's true, yeah, you're like, right. Like that's ama- that's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That that really speaks to like how kind of the Marvel marketing and how well the universe is going in general. Because we both thought it was okay. I think you liked sure. it less than me. Uh-huh. But the fact that it made more money than a Superman movie is fucking insane. Like, how is that possible? But the Superman movies, I do they have the? I've always, I've never really thought that Superman movies have the pull that the the, the anything else. Has. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe you're right. Yeah, but sure. The, I love Superman. You love Superman. Yeah, but it's not. But the movies have. Um, well, for you in particular, you've never liked any of them, really. I didn't mind Man of Steel. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. me neither. That's okay. But the private, yeah, uh, but it really felt. If you listen to our commentary, you can, you can, you can feel <laughs> the moment where we both drop off. But it's yeah. quite long. Yeah. Uh, but I, did, I really, I don't think the public at large like Superman. Yeah, that you're probably right. Mm. But I think no, nobody, but no, not a, nobody knew Doctor Strange. That's but you think true, that yeah. maybe that worked for it though? Because they're like, oh, this is a new character, as opposed to be like Superman. Ugh. Yeah, I boring. agree. Yeah. Because you don't know what Doctor Strange' weaknesses are. Mm. Um, being stabbed. Being stabbed <laughs> and driving a Lamborghini off a cliff. That's his weakness. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Do you remember at the end of that? There's a little. There's a little PSA, and it says, "Remember not to. Remember not to text and drive because it's, <laughs> it's a real trouble." You know what? This guy texted and drove, and now he's the sorcerer <laughs> supreme of the Earth dimension. So I was going to say that's implied, but it's I guess it's not. It's mm-hmm. the opposite lesson of that, yeah, isn't it? That's Smash right. your hands up, get a new gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But yeah, you don't know what his powers are. You don't know what his limitations are. It's an intriguing concept. Yeah, yeah. That you may or may not love. Uh, but Superman, you go uh, the the public at large go in going. That your your mic's popping a bit. Do you want to oh, turn it a little back? Yeah. Turn it just no, just just push it away from you a little bit. No, just like this, just sideways. Yeah, oh, that? man. Yeah, okay. that should work. Anyway, keep going. Sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. Uh, I was going to say, like, the general public goes in going, what problems is Superman going to have? Is it going to be kryptonite again? Is he going to cry? Is he going to cry? Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I mean, but you know what? That's also the opportunity to make a Superman movie where people go, oh, I haven't seen this version of Superman. Correct. Yeah. Which I feel like Man of Steel was. Yeah. But I don't think it resonated enough to... For then people to tell other people that, because I think a lot of people coming out of Doctor Strange going and telling other people, oh no, this is great. You should, you should That's see true, it. It's yeah. fun. It's mm-hmm. got, it's got Sherlock in it. And yeah, right. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He, he smashes his hands up. That funny joke about Beyonce. <laughs> what a, what a joke. It had something else. What else was good in that? Something was good. Uh, I liked the cloak. It was cloak good. Was good yeah. I liked the whip fight. I like when he fell through all the dimensions. Dimensions. He went in his own eye, and then his fingers oh, yeah. had arms. arms yeah. mm, but you great. thought not enough of that. No, I like the way you beat the villain, the infinite loop, time oh, yeah. loop. Mm, yeah, sure. Anything, anything you liked? Uh I like the joke that Mads Mikkelsen makes that's better in the trailer than it is in the movie. <laughs> yes, I like that. that. Was a good, that was a good joke in the trailer, but not in the movie itself. Wasn't it just? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Douglas is back for Ant Man and the Wasp. Nice. Any, no need for. Anything on that? Need Great. A comment? Sounds good. Good. Yeah. Uh, Wait, young? We don't, well, we don't regular know. day Michael Douglas. Sure, definitely. yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, I don't think, maybe he's just going to be some kind of mentor. I'd like to see him suit up. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like, because he's, it's kind of that same thing as Pacific Rim. Remember where the guy couldn't, he couldn't Jaeger because he'd had, he'd had, he'd done too many Jaegers. He'd done too many Jaegers, exactly. Yeah. But, and Michael Douglas is on the same kind of spectrum where he can't really do it anymore because it kind of it's He'll implied crazy, that he went yeah. mad yeah uh-huh. and hit his wife maybe like Ooh. he did in the comics but uh no i'd like to see it so like he has to do it again i think that would be cool that would be fun yeah it'd be like the time also in batman 66 where alfred had to rescue bruce wayne in the batman outfit do you remember that no and he's got his tweety little mustache poking out from uh, under the yeah from under the suit mm-hmm. amazing Oh, I do remember that now. Yeah, you're right. What a fun time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, great. When are they going to bring... I've said this before and I said it on Twitter, at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, bring back some of the 60s Batman villains. I'm just going to unfollow you for that a shameless plug, Mason. <laughs> I'm not happy. Bring back Milton Burl as Louis the Lilac. That's what I say. <laughs> bring back Egghead. Bring him back. Yeah. yeah. As, I was, as I said, put put Scrambled. 
Yeah. Tattoo scrambled across his forehead. <laughs> then he's not your grandpappy's egghead, is he? No, he's not. Uh, we also got an Iron Fist trailer. That's coming yeah, up. Yeah, we did. Looks great. It's, yeah, it does. I really hope it's good because I, I didn't love Luke Cage. Yeah. Um, at all. Kind of. I, I like the character. I like. I liked everybody in it for the most part, but that really kind of flattened out after. But you three know what? Episodes. I and I. I think maybe one of the the downfall of that a little bit mm. was there were so many one sided. Samey fights. Yeah, walking down a corridor and people are hitting him with Which initially in the, tra- again in the trailer, super fun, but when there's... Tw- how many episodes was it? 12? Yeah. 13, 13, yeah. 13 episodes, it was a bit bit samey. Yeah. But this one... Like the action in that wasn't, yeah. wasn't great. This, this martial arts stuff is looking mm. real nice. The best Luke Cage fight scene is in Jessica Jones. Yeah, it is. That mm-hmm. bar fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So he goes, he tries to get back into the company. He just shows up and he's fisherman's pants or whatever <laughs> yeah. and he's like I'm the CEO and they kick him out and he beats up security guards or whatever it's very it's very Batman it's very Doctor Strange it's it's all those kind of mm. mystical origins you yeah. go to the Orient and you'll learn some magic powers <laughs> yeah. or whatever yeah yeah. no it's it's it's. I hope it's good I, I'm, I'm, I'm well on board and the Defenders at the moment is is, is filming mm-hmm. which is good what I also like about this is it's opening up magic yeah, yeah, some iron fisting. He's he ain't messing around with that iron fist. No, I tell you, certainly not. Which is good because the Netflix series have been relatively, relatively effects free. Like not, ne- not yeah. superhero free because Jessica Jones obviously super strong. Luke Cage is in D- and Daredevil's got the radar sense or whatever. Yeah. But just I just want somebody punching the ground with a glowing fist and everything goes flying. That's yeah, what I want. man, I want to see a guy hit a car that's coming at him and it flips flips over, over his head. <laughs> yes, <laughs> can we please get that for once? Yeah, God, no, but um, yeah, no, that's 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 pretty bloody. It's pretty bloody exciting. Also, I think we've got what well, we do. We've got lined up. We're going to do an Iron Fist episode where we talk about some classic Iron Fist comics and stories over I'm the next few to that. weeks. I've, yeah. I have a few. In I've the, been I've got a few in the tank. <laughs> Absolutely, I've been reading through. I got we got some interesting ones that we want to get to. Now, Mason, for this next section, for uh, this segment that we're doing, I'm I'm fairly certain I'm going to get Ben to turn this into a YouTube video, so it has to be perfect. I don't want you to say anything too outlandish that he then go has to animate or find an obscure picture of. I'll say whatever I want. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> the Avengers: Infinity War pre-production uh, trailer that that went out. Oh yes. Did, did you get a bloody look in on that? I got a look in on that. So this is the way they do it now, I guess. It started on January 23rd, mm-hmm. so there it's it's going to be pretty much a year of filming. They're doing yeah. two back to back, Infinity War, War and, and then Untitled Avengers Project. Else. Yeah, but we do know that it is going to be a direct follow up, so it's going to be May next year, and then the, and then the following May, mm-hmm. uh, and there's going to be massive consequences for the universe, Mason. So this will be like a things missed. Oh uh, yeah, what, okay. What did you see? The secrets. Tom I didn't... Holland's not American at all. <laughs> That's right. Hello. <laughs> Well, I, I saw the Avengers, I saw the Avengers in the cinema with all my mates. <laughs> and who knew, then very shortly afterwards, I'd be in the Avengers and I'd be Spider-Man. <laughs> Did you notice his Hollywood hair? Yeah. He's got Hollywood hair it's now. He's got Hollywood hair now, right? It yeah. only takes a few months, doesn't and it? he got Hollywood hair. It's something in the water. Something in that LA water. It must be. Num, 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 it's num. the water and the sunshine, baby. You should get baby. some shipped down. I think so. Mm-hmm. If you live in the area. Well, let's talk about Spider-Man, though, because there's a few... Now I'm friends with Robert Downey Jr. and whoever was on my left, I can't remember. Fuck off. That's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Spider-Man, you see, he's got motion capture gloves on under yeah, the suit. Right. You see it. He was kind of keeping him hidden, but not really. Yeah, yeah. I think they said, I think they reckon they said to do that deliberately. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everything in this is incredibly planned. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, But also, there was another behind the scenes video where he's asking Robert Downey Jr. questions. And this is before they kind of revealed that Spider-Man's in it. And the, he flips the camera around and you see Tom Holland's face. He's got his beautiful Hollywood hair. Mm-hmm. But he's also got all the mocap dots all over his face. Okay. Which has led people to believe that maybe this is the version of Spider-Man that gets the black suit because he goes to space. Right, yeah. Because okay. in, in Secret Wars, is that Secret right? Wars, From the, the 80s, original Secret Wars, yeah. He gets yeah. the sim- symbiote. Yes, he does. In the Spider-Man 3, it just drops from space and lands in a park that he's mm-hmm. near. And it's never explained where it came from. Are there aliens <laughs> in that universe? I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose so. I always assume because in that universe, it's, it's all just misfits of science. I just assumed it was shot out of a cannon from some sort of <laughs> some sort of lab. Absolutely, you know, yeah. as a prank, maybe. Yeah, totally. Or even an experiment to be like, let's see what this does. Yeah, yeah. let's give this to some rando in a park. 
Everything will be, we'll have a whole bunch of fun provided that guy doesn't have super strength. My, oh no. The way I justified it, which you shouldn't because that's not a very good movie, is that I guess that symbiote had some kind of direction he was going or it was going and it was like, I'm going to latch onto the strongest thing in this universe. Okay, sure. And it's Spider-Man. So I, 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 maybe it wasn't an accident or maybe someone just shot it out of a cannon. Shot it out of a cannon. <laughs> yeah. That's my theory. Good, good. Uh, they were also talking about how this is the comp- the Infinity War is a combination of. Ten- it was Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt was. It was Chris Pratt, mm-hmm. and he wouldn't have said rude things. He's a he's a lovely yep. young man. He's got great Hollywood hair. Uh, they were saying that it's the combination of the ten years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because by the time this rolls around, Iron Man was two thousand and eight, and mm-hmm. now now this one's bloody whatever ne- next year is. It's isn't it weird to think. The Avengers was 2012, and this will be six years after the Avengers. So the Avengers was closer to Iron Man than this is to the Avengers, the original Avengers. Does that make sense? That is fun to think about. You're not wrong. (laughs) God, time is funny, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, So Thanos. Yeah, right. We see a bit of concept art. We see him and he's got a nice sleeveless tee on. Absolutely. He does look a bit like Vin Diesel, doesn't he? (laughs) He's got that kind of look. He should probably wear a hat. He looks a bit weird with his... His bald head. Because he looks like a big purple egg. Yeah, he sounds like a purple egg. But he looks like a purple Twitter egg. <laughs> they were talking about... The ultimate villain. Just somebody <laughs> trolling you on Twitter. <laughs> they were talking about how... He's had a reimagining. Absolutely, yeah. They were talking about how since like pretty much day one, or since the Avengers, it's been... More like Captain Lay, America, <laughs> send, burn. Mm-hmm. But I think the first, maybe the first inkling of Thanos was in Thor, the, the original Thor, we yes. see... We, we see, see the Infinity, Infinity Gauntlet. Or one of them. Yes. It's not the one that he actually has because they're left. There's, there's two of them. They're left and right-handed. And people have speculated since then that we're going to be getting Thanos. So they've said, oh, we know Thanos is coming and people know it's coming, so we want to introduce him in a way that kind of... Do you think when, do you think when they went past that treasure room in Thor, mm. do you think they had any inkling they were going to do it from there? No. Or do you think they, they were just... Because there's like the Eye of Agamotto. Is in there, there's something yeah. else in there. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. No, I think... I think you have the theory that they just threw a bunch in and just thought what See people See what attached. people bit on, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah mm. absolutely. Because the Infinity, the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, mm. it's it's good, but it's not. And it's it's very 90s. Yeah. But it that's probably not the most memorable storyline of that era no. until it's been, you know, so heavily promoted. I've never properly read it. I've kind yeah, of skimmed right? it because uh-huh. it seems long. Mm. <laughs> but I do like that moment where Captain America kind of faces up to Thanos and he's like, you're a bully and we're going to stop you. And then he just breaks his shield. Right, yeah. I love it. Uh, they said the reason also they did Civil War was because they wanted to to make Thanos more of a challenge, even though he's the most powerful being in the whatever. Yeah, right. whatever. <laughs> and he has a device that gives him infinite power. <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. That uh, the idea was you break the Avengers apart in Civil War mm-hmm. so they're kind of more vulnerable and you, you bring them back together for, for this movie. That, uh-huh. That's kind of the idea. And also we're going to see why... He's the most dangerous kind of being in the galaxy. Infinity Gauntlet. Infinity Gauntlet. Because <laughs> the actual, like, the, the clear reveal of him, which is in Guardians of the Galaxy, is just kind of like, here's a raisin sitting on a chair. He's just tootling about <laughs> on a flying chair. Yeah, there's, and he kind of... There's, there's no, no dramatic re- reveal where he's, no. like, walking down, a like, a hallway and you hear his feet thunder down and nah. you're like, this guy's so... You just, it's like, he, he looked like a character from the Jetsons. Yeah. Like... <laughs> he just kind of floats <laughs> And there's no like even sense of scale because he's yeah. like nine feet tall. Yeah, yeah. But you don't get that because he's kind of you see yeah. him kind of a distance. It's it it it's, it could be like it's it's Baron Zemo's imaginary alien friend that only he can see. <laughs> yeah, the it. great Gazoo style. <laughs> but yeah, they are. <laughs> and they also mentioned that the collector's probably it looks like the collector's going to return. That cool, was in, okay. In a, in yeah. a different, which is makes sense because he's tied to the Infinity Stones or whatever. Mm. Did you see that? But the in t- this, I guess, in the in the comic books, he's he's sort of one of the you know the most ancient beings in the universe, and he has mm. ultimate cosmic power and etc. Yeah. But in this, it's he's just like etc. Do you dude. mean weird hair? Was so that- so weird. Yeah, yeah. Such weird. Yeah. But in in the, in the movie, he just seems to be some guy. Yeah. He just, <laughs> he's just a sad dude. Who he's collects kind stuff. of got a library of stuff. Yeah. That's mm. that's pretty much it. Uh, and th- do you see that there's a Tony Stark concept art where you see like his new suit? Like he's yeah, kind of, right. It looks like he's building another armory, perhaps. Because mm-hmm. they also mentioned that he's kind of one of the only ones on Earth who knows this is coming. Because remember, right. he had that vision. Yeah. And that's what the re- that's why the reason that's he, right. he made Ultron in the in the first place. And mm. Well, he should definitely build another arsenal of dangerous things because <laughs> it went so well the last time. Did uh, you see there was some Spider-Man concept art and there's a new version of his armor in that? Yes. Very cool. Yeah. That's, that's like the... Um, 
Centurion armor? No. What's that? It looks no, a lot like Ultimate? the Ultimate armor, yeah, like yeah. his original version, which was kind of clunkier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like it. I think it's cool. It is. It is pretty. You cool. don't like it? No, I do like it. All right. Mason likes it. Everybody. Bloody like it. All right. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, and we also see the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to meet the Avengers, which is yeah. Which is, we, we knew that was coming. Yeah, out. absolutely. But it's it's kind of you know, it's good to get the the confirmation. But speaking of the Ultimate Universe, one of the pieces of Gar- uh, of concept garbage. Up, garbage of concept up. We we see we see Rocket Raccoon, yep. and we see Thor behind him, and Thor's hammer is not his traditional hammer. Oh, and right. It, people are either theorizing that it's the uh, the ultimate version, which is the current story arc, isn't it? He's in going- uh, in Unworthy Thor, the comic book series Unworthy Thor, he's lost. He can't use his his original hammer, and Jane Foster is now the the official Thor. Yep. Uh, so he's he's Thor attempting- for real. Thank you. Yeah. And he's attempting to find the the ultimate universe's Thor's hammer. Because all the universes collided and yeah, whatever. So yeah. he's trying to track that down. So you think maybe he's... Well, that's either that or the, or it's or it's Yarnborn, the axe. Yeah. Because you don't see the end of it. I think it might be because this is this is a weird... This would be a weird entry point to add parallel universes. Be like, oh, P.S., yeah. P.S., this parallel universe you haven't seen before. There's two hammers. Yeah, there's two hammers. <laughs> but it must, give, must have some... Whatever it is, must have some form of power because he's wearing the Thor suit and the suit kind of is tied to the hammer in this universe. Because remember when he gets the hammer back it... I agree, but also... Shut up? <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> but I think if he lost the... I think if he lost the use of the hammer... I think he loses the use of the hammer... In Ragnarok. The suit stays. Okay. Like, if enough. he lost his power... I think, like, in... Like, you know, I think Avengers, when he holds the hammer aloft and he gets, you know, he the, he calls the lightning down and it builds the suit around yeah. him. I think that once, once that's the suit's done, on, it's, it's like a real physical thing. I guess that's true, because in... The Dark World, when it goes into another dimension on the other side of the galaxy, his suit doesn't fall off. Exactly. That yeah. would be very <laughs> embarrassing. In the in the original Thor comic books, if he loses, if he doesn't touch the hammer for 60 seconds, yeah. uh, he turns back into Donald Blake. I think it would be better in this. It would be more realistic, certainly, in this movie. If he, if he lost the hammer for 60 seconds, all his clothes fell off. <laughs> So he has to sleep spooning his hammer. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But yeah, uh, I I get the I'm imagine maybe he loses the hammer in Ragnarok. Yeah, absolutely. And now he's just he's a, a sad. He's dude. a weakened version with an of axe. Yeah, I mean, how sad could you be? Ugh, bloody hell! Oh right, well, that's that's what a great video this maybe was. Do you want me to but, do more Tom Holland? N- sure, <laughs> just cap it, bookend it. Oh yeah, go. H- hello. <laughs> Freshen your drink. He has to get everyone's drinks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? Why do you think he's got the mocap? I reckon maybe it's web fists. Ah, oh, cool. Web fists, with, web fists would be mm, great. Yeah. yeah, maybe. I glued me hands together, <laughs> sir. Mister Stark. Maybe it's to stop him touching his hair. Touching his Hollywood maybe it's just hair. Maybe it's him to, to stop touching himself at night. <laughs> Perhaps he's a young man. All right. Next topic? Yeah. The next topic is a Loot Crate ad. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. So, uh, loot, you've actually got until the 19th of this month, Mason, 9 p.m. Paci- Pacific, mm-hmm. to subscribe and receive. Specific 9 p.m. Pacific. That's right, to receive uh, that month's crate. And when the cutoff happens at over, you can't, it's over, you can't get what's, it again. What's the theme? Well, we've talked about it already, but it's actually, uh, it's, uh, what is it? It's roll up your sleeves and get ready to celebrate some pop culture, some of pop, pop culture's most <laughs> put together franchises. February's hand on th- hands on theme is build and features Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That movie's coming up. That's it's a right. hot, it's a hot new take. Mm-hmm. Did you see also they're doing a, um, they might be doing an animated version uh, for Netflix potentially. With the guy who made that really good fan film from a few really? years back, I right. watched that the other day. Yeah, that's really it's still really, good, it's right? Really yeah. good. I I don't know why they're making this version of it that they're currently <laughs> making. Like a lot of fan films, are like oh, this is good for what it is, but that is genuinely. Do you think that great. it would? And I don't even care for the Power Rangers at do all. Do you think that would expand out to two hours? Do you think you'd get yeah, sick maybe of that not. in two hours? Yeah, I think the I think that works so great because it's five minutes or whatever it is, yeah. and it could go any way. Yeah. And it's... Real gritty and adult and yeah, that, adult. And of course, and that's probably why also it appeals to like me and you. Yeah. But this version, obviously, they want they want to get new yeah. fans and everything. Mm-hmm. So I understand the the direction they're taking. I don't understand why they've called it Saban's Power Rangers. Yes. And I also don't understand if that this movie has got a hundred and seventy five million dollar budget, why it looks so shit. Well, look, maybe it's not finished. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that all CGI. Maybe that guaranteed all CGI final battle is going to look great, <laughs> as no all CGI final battle has ever done in a movie. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, you get a you get an item from Mighty Morphin Power oh, Rangers, nice. uh, Batman, Lego Dimensions, and Tetris. And as always, there's a monthly T-shirt and pin. Uh, so the the boxes range. Uh, that's 
that that box is less than twenty dollars, but there's a whole bunch of they them you can get. There's, yeah, they do loot pets, they do loot, loot gaming, gaming, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, if you go to lootcratecom slash planet and enter code weekly planet one word, you get three dollars off any new subscription. I today. wish I wish that you you started that with the 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 theme for this view, but like roll up your sleeves, and I'm like, what if that was the topic? Roll up your sleeves and get a job. <laughs> Your bum, your parents are ashamed of you. <laughs> All right, Mason. Yeah. Big week for movies. Yeah. Fifty Shades of Darker. Oh yeah. Lego Batman. Mm-hmm. John Wick Two. Yeah. How many of those did we see? Zero. <laughs> Bloody goose egg, mate. Because <laughs> one of them we've got no interest in. Yep. And the remaining two are not out. Not here. out here yet. Uh, John Wick 2 is never coming out here. <laughs> Apparently, to, there to is to the best of my knowledge. There is no release date for that, and Lego Batman's being saved for the uh, for the school holidays. Which who knows when that is? <laughs> who bloody knows? <sighs> so what we thought we'd do this week in celebration of Keanu Reeves or in all his glory, who we I who I'm a big fan of. Same. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we thought we'd uh, talk about the Keanu. Like we thought we'd do this every now and then. Take a, an action star and yeah. just go through their movies. Some of the just best pick them the off worst. one by one. <laughs> yep. Just take decades, their their decades long over all the work that they've tried, worked so hard on, and yep. and bloody bloody slaved away on, and just be like, good, bad, <laughs> good, bad, hate it, no good. This guy sucks. See you later. <laughs> Who's next? That's what we're gonna do. I'm excited. Me too. Now, I thought of a rating system. Our normal rating system is uh, best movie ever, worst movie ever. Yeah. But I thought if it's bad, we could say Kia no, and if it's good, we <laughs> could say Kia yes. Great. What do you think? Kia no. <laughs> oh no. No, I'm kidding. It's great. Great. Awesome. Do you want to do these chronologically? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, or do you? Yeah. Okay. So, what would you say his first big breakout action movie is? Interesting. You say break. Why is that interesting? Is it Point Break? Or did he say I think it's that? Point Break. Okay, it's I, point break. I, the ones I saw in his IMDb list, I didn't recognise as action movies. Right. Yeah. I think Bill and Ted's was before, but that's not really an action movie. No. It's a great movie, but it's not a. When was the last movie. time you saw Bill and Ted's, though? Not that long ago. I think they're both good. People mm-hmm. say Bogus Journey isn't as good. I think they're both as good as each other. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. For whatever that means. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of is is that is the is the Bill and Ted three is that still on the slate? Yeah, absolutely, he was on Good. Graham Norton recently, and he said the story revolves around they're now in their fifties, yeah, and <laughs> and they still haven't written the song that's got to save the world, so it's got oh, this mountain fun. pressure, right? Yeah. Because the the premise was always that they united all of humanity yeah. with a, with Wild one, Stallion's greatest hits yeah, or right. whatever. So mm. so I guess they're still successful rock stars because they. That's how Bogus Journey ends. They time yeah. travel and they learn how to play guitar and they yeah. come back and play a Kiss song. What's Alex Winter been up to? Not much, but he looks good. He looks yeah, right. yeah. He looks in good yeah. shape. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's busting out some zingers on Twitter too. Is he? Yeah, great. Yeah. Good but on him. Latest bloody administration. You know what I mean? Is he up against Piers Morgan? Probably. <laughs> Isn't everybody? Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. Point Break though. I don't think I only just, just recently, recently saw this. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you've you've got a hot new take then. Yeah. So instead of watching John Wick two, you watched. Point break, break some months ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, I wasn't on board until that guy gets a dog thrown at him. <laughs> well, I don't remember that. Somebody gets a dog. There's a chase sequence <laughs> through a whole bunch of like beachfront residential property. Okay. And at one point, some and some the the, the pursuer gets a dog hurled at them. You don't remember that? Who's the who's the pursu- who's chasing who? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now Patrick Swayze was. Nearly forty when the time this this movie came out, but he was he's Bodie, isn't he? Yeah. Is he Bodie? Mm. And Keanu, he's certainly Grody. <laughs> he is. He's dead now, unfortunately. He's a dead man. That's what I meant. Oh, is that what you meant? That's my code What's for Grody dead. Man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Grody's just like gross. It's a surface. It's surfer dude slang, man. So he's a rotting corpse, which is quite Grody. Very extremely Grody. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, so this movie has been, I think, the reason this really got pushed into the public consciousness recently, or recently-ish, Hot Fuzz kind of brought it back in a big way. Right, yeah. there's a lot of references to Point Break in, in Hot, Hot Fuzz. He does the gun shooting into the air because yeah. he, he can't shoot what's his name and, and whatever. There's a theory in it that Bodhi uh, goes out and becomes one with the ocean at the end or something. He goes for one last surf and then he goes out and he either dies or he... He definitely dies. He dies. <laughs> no, I don't know, but... <laughs> That's a big wave out there. And some right. atrocious Australian accents <laughs> right at the end. So this, what's the story again? So he has to go, uh, is the, is the rat... Hello, is welcome the, to Bell's Beach. Is that where it is? Yeah. It's the, so he, 
Modi's the raddest dude. They're, they're surfers slash extreme sportsmen slash bank robbers. Yeah, that's right. And they because they want they want an endless summer, man. Don't we? And all? the way to fund an endless summer is not a series of part time jobs that you tell your boss to stick it later on. No, you rob rob some banks in presidential masks. Yeah, exactly. And then they send in Keanu Reeves, mm-hmm. former football star. Yeah, or correct. Yeah, and but he didn't have an injury, so yeah, he's Johnny for, Utah, former QB, Johnny That's Utah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then so he infiltrates the gang, learns to surf and be extreme, and yep. But then maybe he gets too he, close to a, the case. He has, well, he has a tryst with Tank Girl at one point. Oh, really? Is Tank Girl in yeah, this? Yeah, Laurie Petty's in it. I didn't know that. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Anyway, is it good? No. <laughs> Agreed. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's re- you it's know good what? for the time. Yeah, but even even watching it at the time was it boring. A little bit. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's never good, it is it? It wasn't, yeah, because it hadn't. we hadn't reached that level of everything being extreme with a massive level of irony on top. Right. Like it was just extreme. But don't you think that's a better version of extreme than somebody doing massive levels of irony extreme? Like a, cause That is the eternal question, cause isn't it? Because it's funnier. Because you're like, oh, no, this is, they think this is <laughs> like- You know what, again- Somebody gets a dog thrown at him. Yeah, good point. You should Google that real quick. All right. You should look up Point Break Dog Throw. I'll do it. Okay, do it. Also, Gary Busey's in it. Or Nick Nolte. <laughs> no, it's definitely Gary Busey. Okay, Busey's right, in. yeah. There's a video here that says Keanu Reeves punts dog. So that so he gets thrown at him and then he... <laughs> he drop kicks it. Yeah, there you go. He catches it and then he kicks it off the balcony. Yeah. Amazing. I'm going to watch that it. again. <laughs> Jeez. Somebody's done a remix. Yeah. You know what? Wow, he really puts the boot. You know, in, re- and in retrospect, now that I'm thinking about it, there is some... It, it is enjoyable in this, like, this unrelenting machismo kind of... Now, you mentioned Gary Bro Busey. Surfer. Gary Busey's in it. We got... we He's he's facing off against John C. McGinley. Oh, yeah. That's the right, doc from that. Scrubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... What a, what a duo. Oh, uh, yeah. Man, what an era. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, does Bram Stoker's Dracula count as no, an action No, it's an action movie? film. Absolutely not. So either, yeah. Anyway, it's not that good, is it? No. Uh, well, the next one, the big one, is Speed from 1994. Yeah, right. Which is a great movie. When was the last time you saw it, though? Not that long ago. Oh, wait. Um, I should have said... Kia, Yes. To the to point break? Yeah, why not? I'm going to say Kian no, because right. I, haven't, I haven't seen it in a while. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speed. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it in a while, obviously, but that's kind of, that also does the un- unironic kind of tough guy, like cool speeches and and, 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 and awesome action bef- before it became like self-aware and, you know, like Xander Cage winking at the camera. It takes itself so seriously uh-huh. and it's so funny and great for those reasons. Do we still have movies that are unironic? No, they don't exist. Wow. Oh, Resident Evil maybe? Ah, uh, ooh. I don't know what that was. No, I feel they're winking at the camera as well. Yeah. Remember that one where the guy gets his head cut in half? They get a like piece of glass through his head? No, I feel like they're pooing right into the camera. That's oh, what fantastic. Doing. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when's the last time you saw Speed? When it came out. No shit. Maybe. You haven't seen Speed since. I don't think so. It's got a great sense of mounting tension. To be fair, it does... Once they're off the bus, it kind of it becomes kind of less interesting. Yeah, because it's all about the bus. Because how much speed can you achieve not on a bus? Well, in the sequel, none. None. <laughs> Almost it's on a boat. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, I think I. You know what? I probably saw it. I probably saw it at the cinema, and then I probably would have seen it first run on like free to air TV, sure, yeah, yeah. like two years later where or they, something like where that. Where it's an ad every four minutes, and it and, was two and a half hours long, and they yeah. cut out all the swearing. And, yeah, and exactly. whatever. Yeah, absolutely. No dogs being punted at all. <laughs> no, but there's the there's the bus jump which they actually did. Like yeah, okay. they CGI removed the the bridge, but they actually they they really flung a bus with a whole bunch of people in it. No, no one was in it, as far as I know. Maybe the driver, I guess. I assume. Nah, they can, they can remote, remote, they control, can remote it, yeah. yeah. But no, if I they think- can remote a drone at a wedding, yes. you can remote a bus over a fake bridge. <laughs> you know? But there's like amazing stuff, so like even the way that he, there's a there's a great, first of all, the opening sequence is great where he shoots Jeff Daniels to- That's to, always great. Yeah, Just seeing get, Jeff Daniels shot. To get, like, to stop Dennis Hopper, who's the mad bomber, who was, mm-hmm. who's a former- Bomb disposal guy. Now, why has he gone mad? Because he is- got he all he got was a cheap watch and whatever. When ah oh, right, okay. And he even uses his watch on the bomb. Do you remember? Yeah. Because Dennis Hopper uses a bomb and an elevator cable to get everybody's attention at the start. That's and right. And they think he's been killed in the explosion. Yeah. Which, if you rewatch that scene, he absolutely was. Because there's no way he got away. <laughs> 
in that in that, well, that time I, frame. That is that is your unironic. See, we, we're talking about movies that have layers of irony and no irony. We recently watched Triple X, yes, three, and a character is clearly atomized in an explosion. <laughs> Right at the start, and then comes back at the end. Yes, that's a, that that no, there's no irony there. Absolutely yeah. not. It yeah. wasn't like a ha ha, as if like you you can't get me. I'm I'm explosion proof or whatever. That's Just, it. Yeah, bloody hell, Dennis anyway, Hopper. Dennis Hopper. So the bomb on the bus, I have to keep it above fifty. And you I even, know what the plot? I know. Of speed I'm just telling is. everybody who has it. But and and even like the when Keanu Reeves figures that out. And he's trying to get on the bus before it hits fifty, and even that's a great sequence because you're like, you feel like he's gonna make it, yeah, huh. but he doesn't, right? And then he gets on, and then he has, then they have to, obviously have to keep pay, keep pace, and the brake lines, I'm mean, not the brake lines, the the fuel line gets cut, so they're using they're losing fuel, and if was a woman tries to jump off, and he blows, blows a the hole stairs, in the door yeah. or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they a, loop the footage. They loop the footage. It's a classic loop the footage. Yeah. Do, when do you think looping the footage died? Is it still around looping the footage? Of I the think we still camera? see loop like variations on loop the. Now f- I'm sure th- Bond recently has yeah. looped the footage. And I think, but nowadays, I guess now it's a very much an accepted trope. Yeah. Like back in, I'm sure back when they did Speed, there was a long explanation of how they we're gonna input that we're gonna record some footage that already exists, yeah. and then we're gonna loop it around. We're gonna yeah. use editing techniques or whatever. We're gonna but intercept a signal. But now I guess you just. Show somebody plugging in a little box. Yeah, exactly. Into the, into the, into the and the cameras flicker for a second, yeah. and then. Oh, but I think there's variations on loop the footage. Like Mission <laughs> Impossible will take like a photo of a stairwell, and then put that in front of the camera. Yeah, right. Or like, do you remember that bit in four where they they go in the Kremlin and they use that fake hallway? Yeah, remember the fake projected the fake projected hallway. So yeah. I think there's we've seen variations on mm. on loop the footage. Yeah, but I don't think you can just do straight up loop the footage and expect people to care. Yeah. these days, new trend. You know it, Poop mate. the footage. <laughs> Somebody work on that. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, and there's also the, the great line where Keanu Reeves kills uh, Dennis Hopper. He take- I killed you, Dennis Hopper, you bitch. <laughs> where he, he takes his, Dennis Hopper's like, I'm smarter and I'm better than you and you're a real dummy. Keanu Reeves' character, Jack Speed. Jack? Jack Speed. I don't know what his name is. And it's then- almost certainly Jack. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> it is, I think it is. And then he takes his head off and then Keanu Reeves says, yeah, but I'm taller. That's so fine. That's, okay. that's, that's pretty nothing good. Nothing wrong with that, mate. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And then there's a pretty good model train crash with him and Sandra Bullock. Oh, after the action's finished, after they, the action's... they build model trains together and <laughs> they right. crash them together. Crash them, yeah. And then they laugh and laugh. Yeah. But because remember, he handcuffs, Dennis Hopper handcuffs Sandra Bullock to the train. Yep. And His then... name's Jack Traven. There we go. You, okay. you nailed it. <laughs> and then. I was just thinking about that. There are so. There, there's an incredibly limited number of names you can give to an action hero. Yeah, yeah. That may, that, that he's allowed to maintain his manliness. Totally, yeah. He can't be called Dale. He can't be called Trevor Pittsburgh. <laughs> can he? No, no, no. Yeah. Jack Pittsburgh though. Definitely, one hundred percent. Pittsburgh is an okay name. I for think so. A, yeah, for a hero. You're yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, great. Anyway, it's a good movie. I All think. Right. It, I think it's one of his best. Huh? Yeah. Do you think it'll hold up though? Yeah, I think so. All right. I think there's a good. I, I love the mounting tension. Mm-hmm. I love the line at the end where they're like, "Relationship shouldn't start because there's too much passion and they don't last or whatever." Yeah, I don't like that. It's the worst bit of the movie. <laughs> and the, the, their relationship doesn't last. Absolutely. Because she's with what's his name? The other guy in Speed Two. Temuera Morrison. No, he is in that. Willem Dafoe. No. What the hell is his name? Don't know. No idea. Anyway, there's a she's with a different cop in Speed Two. Oh wow! And that's about the, who looks quite similar. Yeah, oh, that that's... was a very expensive failure. That movie, which I've never seen in entirety. No, neither have I. Yeah. Why would you? Speed Two Cruise Control, but even Under Siege Two, which we spoke about earlier, has a faster vehicle in it. You know it does, mate. What's... They they did it the correct way. Bloody aircraft carrier. Yep. Or whatever it was, yep. battleship. Yep. Then train. Did they have a sexy faster. woman coming out of a cake in two? No, but there's a woman who uses her boobs to distract somebody and then Steven Seagal kills them. Great. I assume with a neck break, a knife to the back of the head. That is the equivalent of going faster. Mm -hmm, I agree. (laughs) In a a big way. A woman dives into a cake. (laughs) Jason Patrick is who you're thinking That's who it is, yeah. Yeah. And apparently he hated Sandra Bullock and she knew it. What? See, I think Keanu... Where's he now? Exactly. I I don't even know which one he is. (laughs) I think Keanu Reeves is smart in a lot of ways. Because name all the ways he's smart. Because if you look at the movies he, he's in, I've said this before, he's not necessarily the greatest actor, mm-hmm. but every now and then he picks something which is just 
fucking on point. That's true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Bill and Ted, Speed. We're going to go through them, man. You're going to know them when we hit them. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely going to know the ones I'm talking about. Uh, this next one is... Oh, Are you sure it's not sheer chance, though? It could well, very spoke, well be. I think maybe, I've spoken about this. Maybe he's the luckiest man in Hollywood. Because there are people who are probably like Keanu Reeves who have similar acting Jason strengths. Jason Patrick. And, <laughs> exactly. Who have similar acting strengths and weaknesses who have just not been that great in the audition. They haven't got these particular ones and have not survived yeah. as long as Keanu Reeves has. Okay, fair enough. I'm not saying he's bad. I like him and stuff. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying is there are probably a, th- a hundred... Th- not a hundred thousand. There's a hundred thousand Keanu Reeves types. That's what I'm there, talking yeah. about. That they've just, they've just slowly frittered away. You right, know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're probably right. Mm. Uh, ninety ninety. Oh, Keanu, Keanu. Yes, for speed. You're gonna Keanu yes speed. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna Keanu yes. I'll Keanu yes. It, okay, good. I appreciate it. Uh, nineteen ninety five. Johnny Mnemonic. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, He's I not agree. on it. No, I'm, I'm, I agree. There's a lot of crap in between. There's a lot of Keanu Greaves movies where he's oh. sad and he does a serious role and he's, he's with a girl and whatever. Mm. There's a lot of Keanu Greaves. Yeah. This isn't one of them. Mm-hmm. But this is set in the year 2021, isn't it? And he's, he's a data carrier. He's a data carrier, yeah. What else happens? What do you that? want to know? There's a cybernetic dolphin. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren is an indestructible street preacher. Yep. Uh, there's a dude who's got a monomolecular whip inside his thumb. You and he got- eventually cuts himself in half with it. <laughs> which, read the manual, man. If That's you're gonna, gonna put, happen. If you're going to put it in your thumb, yeah. read the manual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, what is it? He's got 160 gigabytes that he can store in his head. Oh, but they, how quaint. How quaint. 160 gigabytes. <laughs> but they, it's not a, that's an iPod classic. I know, right? But they put in... He's got a memory doubler. Yes. So they put in 320. Yeah. Which means it's even more than... more. It's even more dangerous. Even more, and it's going to bleed into his regular memories and kill him. Well, that's the thing. And also, he, in order to have his, his data... In order to have this data capacity built in, he had to erase the memories of his childhood. Oh, boo. That's why, yeah, he's, he's a conflicted man. I bet he is. It's kind of fun, this movie. Yeah, no, it is. It's not good. No. But it's, but it's fun. There's also the bit where he goes on the internet... <laughs> Uh, look, if you're not, if you if you're gonna watch this, if you only want to watch one bit, it's just him getting in there, going <laughs> surfing through virtual s- buildings. Because that's what we thought the internet was gonna be back in the day. I don't think I ever thought that. Oh. It was it was like this in hackers. It's that kind of like you come across a locked door and there's a skull and crossbow. And it's like yeah, huh, huh, huh. and then you have to knock on it with your data <laughs> gloves and then you have to answer a riddle. That's how you hack into a computer. Yeah, but then. That, no, I feel that genuinely was the dream. People were like, you can you can go through virtual reality to get to all your files. And then yeah. after about a couple of months, people were like, can't I just, just let me click on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want to fly through. I don't want to fly through my photos. Just it's let like, me click it's like, on it. It's like Jurassic, Jurassic Park where you've got to go through that system of virtual buildings to find the right folders to close yeah. the doors or whatever. So inconvenient. Yeah, I, I do kind of love a 90s interface. Mm-hmm. There's also that movie... What's the one where Sandra Bullock loses the net? Like, the net. The That's net. got a lot the of net. that as well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it was just erasing her driver's license and all sorts of stuff, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because you want, there's, you, you don't want just somebody typing away. Yeah, no. Not you, even, people don't even, that, see, that's the thing, like, it's it's the, the Hollywood's interpretation of just computer use. Mm. It's it's always, who's typing these days? Nobody's typing. Nobody's typing. Everybody's Everyone's clicking. clicking a mouse. Everyone's clicking and mm. copying and a proxy. I would love to see a hack a hacking Film. Maybe there's if anybody knows of one, a film that is predominantly about hacking, not hackers, yeah. but predominantly about hacking, where somebody hacks by just like click, click, yes. double clicks his mouse, and he's like, "All right, we got him." And now we wait for five <laughs> hours for somebody to click on that email, that phishing attempt, yeah, and then input their password, and then I'll just have it. A lot of hacking is now. I'm just gonna do some hacking. I'm just gonna find uh, somebody's put a post note with their password in the bin. <laughs> There it is. I've done the hacking, guys. <laughs> this is me. Done. There's a lot of like the way that you get kind of get into somebody's account and access them and create, you know, take out a phone in their name or whatever. You ring up their service provider. Uh-huh. You pretend that they're them and then you shut off their phone system and that means you can get and then they send, you're like, this is my new email and then you've got access to everything. Oh. So it's a lot of, a lot of it, a lot of hacking is now just going through people. Social just engineering. Tricking, yeah. tricking idiots. Mm-hmm. That That's that's hacking these days, mate. Yeah. It's not flying through a virtual world wearing gloves and you're fighting a, <laughs> a 3D pterodactyl or whatever the hell this is. Mm. Yeah. I wish it was. Have you ever been hacked? You seem like somebody who'd been hacked. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, uh, maybe. Yeah, mm. nothing severe, um, as far as I know. Great. But yeah, please don't hack me if you're 
I'm going to hack you. Not you. I know you can't. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking to the listeners. No, I can hack you. <laughs> Stay out of my bin. Stay out of my post-it note bin. All right, fine. All right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to say Kia, yes, even though it's not very good. Ah. Uh, because it's kind of funny, but also watch it with somebody else. Watch it with somebody who will appreciate it. Watch it with somebody else and have something else to do. Yeah. Here's your rule. Phone's Hacking. on. Phone's yeah. on. You can text. <laughs> it's allowed. You can use the real internet, which is on your phone. <laughs> Uh, this is what I haven't seen, but I suspect you may have. Here we go. 1996 Chain Reaction. It's been a very long time, but yes, I have seen that. What, what, I was going to rewatch it, yeah, but then yeah. something else came up. Something better than Chain Reaction? Look. What is Chain Reaction? It was a bloody... Hang on. Was it a boy who's a genius or something? No, it was, a, it was a cool dude on a motorcycle. Okay. Something something fusion reactor. Okay. There was a lot of that in the 90s, wasn't there? Like yeah. the, the Saint. Remember that? Val Kilmer and the the woman from Back to the Future, the replacement <laughs> Jennifer. She, yes. She, she, yeah, she invented a form of fusion and whatever. Mm. And then the Russians were trying to get it, but the saint could be anybody and anywhere. Yeah, anyway, so Keanu Reeves was a cool guy. Yep. He was also like a, he was a, he was a lab tech kind of guy. It's a sci- sci-fi thriller, Mason. Yeah, because Gr- of fusion. <laughs> anyway, they work. They're all working together. They want to make a fusion reactor because it's 100 percent clean energy or whatever. And then I think the government, uh, Keanu Reeves discovers the secret, and then bloody the government comes after him. I bet. I bet they do. And he's on his motorcycle. How does he feel about that? He's all like, "What? What? <laughs> what? what? Yeah. What is that? Him? What? What? No. That's my Keanu Reeves. It's too much. No. It's too much enunciation. What? No. No." <laughs> I think I do a good Keanu Reeves. Mm. All right. Um, Look, it's forgettable. Yeah, I'm going to say no. <laughs> yeah, no Keanu. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, Keanu. All right. I don't think this one counts, but I put it in. I just wanted to be sure. 1997's The Devil's Advocate. It's not, is it? It's not an action movie. It's not an action movie at all. I mean, he fights the devil. Yeah. Who's maybe his father? I don't no, remember. No, it's definitely his father. I don't, I, can't, I don't think I've ever seen the end of it. I've seen, like, I've watched the, like, three quarters of that movie, like, four times. Okay, so the end of that movie. So the, the premise is that Keanu Reeves is a southern lawyer. What? Is that him? He's a little out of his depth. Sure. As a, as an actor, acting as a southern lawyer. A lot of these movies that we've skipped, he's a little out of his depth. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, go on. And then... Al Pacino. Al Pacino shows up. hoo Thank you. Hell! <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he's the devil. who are I'm the devil. Uh, and then he's like, hey, come to work for me and we'll win all these cases because I'm, I'm the best and maybe I'm the devil. Turns out he is the devil. <laughs> uh, and then Keanu Reeves rejects his he's like I, I I reject all this and I'm I regret it and I'm sad and what have you and then time reverses itself and then he ends up back in the the place where they first met and he's like I'm just I'm still just a regular southern lawyer so everything's fine so Keanu Reeves doesn't know that it's been reversed I can't remember so did the <laughs> we dev- can edit this out. No, I mean like did the devil ca- catch him in a time loop or did Keanu Reeves win? No, Keanu Reeves won. And reverse time. Yes. Is this, is this a Bill and Ted sequel? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's the one we've always wanted. Okay. Bill and Ted 3 is actually going to be Bill and Ted 4. Does the devil know that time is reversed? and Can he have another crack at well, it? Well, he's not rever- it, It's. I think it's implied that all the events of the movie never were. Okay. Because he compromises his principle and his principles and he's a bad guy and all this sort of stuff. And then he, re- he regrets it and then he's like, I, I reject your ideology, what have you, and then it's all, it's all made. So he's was. Damien, the devil's son. No, he doesn't actually have any powers though. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, uh, sounds crap. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's not an action Pacino, movie. Pacino, <laughs> in my Got opinion. Uh, this, is, this is a big one. Mm-hmm. 1999's The Matrix. Never heard of it. I feel like this one is, it's its, it's, its own episode. Yeah, like the Matrix films. I think we can. We've we've talked the Matrix to death. I yeah, feel. Yeah, but I think we. I don't think we've done an actual episode. But I think we should maybe save it. Yeah, I think for so when too. they announce a Matrix yeah. sequel, which they will. Yeah, don't think it's not coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Kia, yes. Yep. For the first one, and then then Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> Wait, and then Carrie Ann Loss for the last there one. There we go. Very good. <laughs> we've done it. Mm-hmm. So that's Reloaded Revolutions. Good action in most of them, mm-hmm. but really falls off a cliff. We're gonna go. To you know what? Keanu Reeves shoots himself at the end of the Devil's Advocate, okay, so he and then time reverses. Oh, okay, yeah. right. Good yeah, on him, mate. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Constantine, yeah, 2005's Constantine, a bit of a hidden gem, I'll say. I agree. It's a bit of a fun time. Yeah. If you're going in expecting British blonde John Constantine 
having a quip and being a British gent. Hello! And all that. <laughs> this is not that. It's yeah. barely Constantine, mm-hmm. but it's kind of great. I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's he, better than the TV series. Probably. It's he, much better. He fights a, a... That 20 minutes that I watched. He fights a monster made of fish and crabs. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a great scene at the start where he fills the sprinklers with... Um, what is it? Holy with holy water. water mm-hmm. And then opens and then turns them on and then he just shotguns a room of demons. Yeah. And the, he also fights Gavin Rossdale from, from Bush. Bush for some reason. Yep. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf's his cabbie. Yep. Yeah, which is... And he's like, I'm going to be like you, John Constantine. Mm. Me and you are going to fight the devil together. And this is before they felt the need to guarantee this was going to be part of a franchise and have a sequel and tie into a large universe. And I think they were... And I don't know. There is kind of the implication of a sequel. uh, Because at the end, the devil takes away his lung cancer. Because he's dying. That's why he's dying Mm. for this movie. Yeah. And then he's chewing gum at the end. That's right, yeah. And he also... the. He makes the ultimate sacrifice, so he's gonna go to heaven. Mm. And the devil's like, "I don't know. I don't. I disapprove. I'm the guy from Fargo. What's his, <laughs> what's his name? I'm generic Eastern European accent man mm-hmm. who's in everything." And Keanu Reeves gives him the bird as he's yeah. off to heaven. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. Mm-hmm. What else in that movie? I don't think I've seen it. Maybe it's not great. I haven't seen. No, it, it is since, great. I haven't, I I haven't seen it since agree. we saw it. Yeah. yeah, I have seen it since then. Okay, cool. I like it a lot. Good creature effects. Pretty good. Yep. The devil looks great. The devil. Well, He's got the white suit and the bleeding feet yeah. at all at all times. And it's because you kind of don't you don't see the devil like there's all this talk of the devil and then he just kind of rocks up and he's just like a like a smooth looking guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's, his, what's that guy's name? Gavin Rossdale from Bush. I don't think it is. No. <laughs> he's in bloody everything. He's the Russian in um Armageddon. Peter Stormare. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. who it is. Yeah. 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 Did you Google that Russian who's in everything? <laughs> yeah, Because that's bloody Vladimir Putin putting his bloody <laughs> fingers in every Here's pie. The, the web of intrigue mm-hmm. and lies. What do we got? Oh, Rachel Weiss is in that. That's yeah, she right. is, yeah. yeah I She's that. also in Chain Reaction. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Teamed up again. <laughs> Reteamed the dream team. Uh, what else? And also bloody, um, what's his name's in it? Uh, no, sorry, what, not what's his name. Tilda Swinton's in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she's an angel, a full, like an angel who... Then betrays John Constantine. It's an all-star cast. Boy, is it. Mm. Anyway, I think it might be worth a look. It might be terrible. Don't exp- If you love Constantine, it's not that exactly. But, there's some but stuff- I think there's enough elements to it. Okay. I feel that it is... It's like the first Iron Man movie. Mm. There's enough... I mean, I say that, but I, I'm, like, I'm not the biggest fan of Hellblazer or Constantine just generally. Disagree. You're the biggest fan, but go on. Thank you. Yeah. But I think there are enough elements... You, you, can't, you can't shoehorn in 30 years of... One character's history into two hours. It just doesn't work. So yeah, take yeah. some of the elements. There's a there's a Garth Ennis storyline where he does get cancer yep. and he has to, you know, how's he going to get out of this one kind of thing. That's right. Because the the a big point of this story is the reason why he's doing good things is because he wants to go to heaven. Yeah. But also the people in heaven know that he's just doing it to get into heaven. Yeah. So right. they're like, no, no, right. It, it doesn't count until he does make an actual sacrifice at the end. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of implied that he's only doing this stuff for his own purpose yeah, I, yeah. And that that element worked for me yeah totally yeah, yeah. Mm. and there's the bit where he shotguns all the demons covered in holy water yeah yeah it's good Pretty good i think if you like kind of like blade it's kind of in that kind of camp i Agreed, would say yeah. I, it's pro- I would even say it's better than blade i haven't watched blade in a long time it's probably yeah i am it cannot have, <laughs> it cannot have aged well blade <laughs> great what do you want to know what's next because i can tell oh Please yeah tell yes me. big big yeah yes, yes, yes for that yeah. one me too uh street king wait I was going to say, that's the one I watched. You watched Street Kings? I watched Street Have Kings, Have you seen yeah. it before? No, this is my first time. It's, ki- it's kind of trading day light, right? Yeah, but I quite liked it's, it. I, I, remem- I don't really remember it, but I remember enjoying it. It yeah. has a weirdly all-star cast. It's got Forrest Whitaker. Great. It has Hugh Laurie doing his unplaceable American accent. Oh, don't like it's it. no good, right? Yeah. Uh, Chris Evans is in it as one ah, of the cops. Oh, okay. Um, 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 Cedric the Entertainer's in it. Perfect. Common has, sna- has snuck in again, as usual. Terry Crews and Naomi Harris. Terry Crews is in it. Jay Moore? Yeah, Jay Moore's in it. Um, Aiden from Sex and the City? Yeah, they're all in it. Wow. Terry Crews, before he became the most swole man in Hollywood. Yes. He's <laughs> quite... But did, anyway, it's... it's um, so big? Yeah, it's, it's sort of, it is kind of training daylight. Uh, the action's pretty solid. I, I think reviews with this were kind of mixed, but it's kind of... Yeah, yeah. I think Keanu Reeves works really well in this. There's an opening scene, though. In the opening scene... So he's the new cop and they're kind of corrupting him or trying to? Is that no, right? no, no. He's um he's he's got on the radar of internal affairs kind of thing. Is he a bad bloke? 
He's not the greatest bloke. Okay. He gets the job done, but sometimes he bends a rule. So, uh-huh. for example, so in the opening sequence, uh, directed by David Ayer, yeah, who's Shit, known for, man. of course, two thousand and eight Street Kings, <laughs> but also Suicide Squad. Yeah. So, uh, in the opening sequence, he. You don't know he's a cop initially, so it's kind of funny because he wakes up fully clothed and he's got a, like a gun under his pillow kind of thing. Yeah. And then he goes out late at night to... Uh, he Like, he drives to a parking lot where there is these two Korean gangsters mm. and he's who wanted to buy a machine gun off him. And he opens the trunk of his car and it's like a like a heavy machine gun, like a browning kind of... Oh, and they're like, this is too big or something? Yeah, they're like... They're like, oh, we wanted like... They clearly wanted like an AK-47 or whatever. Yeah. And so he goes super racist at him. <laughs> <laughs> and they beat like it's 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 uncomfortable. And then they beat him up and they steal his car yeah. and they they take it to their hideout. But he's put a GPS in the car, right? So he can track it down because what apparently happened is they they kidnapped two women. Oh, and he, and he needed to find them. So, so it's a can, bigger, it's a long con. Yeah, it's a long con. So he goes in there and he shoots them all. Because he's like he, he he just goes in. He shoots one of them on the toilet, and he shoots one of them. So there's no like put your hands up. No, he just kills. But, them but all. in the like in the wrap up, he's like, I came and I introduced myself as a police officer, yeah, and then yeah. I re- then I returned fire or whatever. But he just goes in and he shoots. But he's them like, all. I'm not doing. I'm not going yeah, to court. <laughs> exactly. So he's kind of he's doing it for the right reasons, but he's kind of a bad egg, and he kind of gets on the yeah. Uh, and but it and it is a good scene. But on the other hand, I'm like, couldn't you have just put a tracker in an AK-47? And just yeah. sold it to him and not get beat not up. Not get beaten up. <laughs> well, right? it was 2008. How big were trackers? I don't know. Probably huge. Yeah. When did Gran Torino come out? Uh, I want to say I want to say 2009. Was what? that the era when Hollywood got out all their racism towards yeah, Asian but, people? But it was okay because there was a message in it, probably mm. right. Yeah. Anyway, I want to say Gran Torino Ki- was 2008. There same you go. year. There you That's go. That's unfortunate. I'm going to say Kia, yes. But it's from okay memory. because now nobody's nobody in Hollywood's racist anymore. Clint so. Eastwood put a cap on it. Yeah, didn't he? Right. yeah. No, mm. I'm, from memory, a Kia, yes. Mm. It's got yeah. a, it's got a 36 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but I don't think it's it's I don't remember disliking it at all. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, not fun. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a bit racist, yeah. if, if yeah. we're honest. Uh, 2008 was, this isn't an action film, really. Uh, well, yeah, it is. Uh, the Day the Earth Stood Still, where he's Klaatu. Have you ever seen that? No, but I've seen the original. It's piss poor, man. Yeah, right. It's no good. Uh-huh. Anyway, the original also, it's probably, it's, I know it's a classic. I bet it's also piss poor. Yeah. I bet they're both piss poor for different yeah. reasons. Mm. Uh, he's an alien. He Pretty saved, good. He saves the world at the end, even though he shouldn't. What, what is the action beat in this movie? Ah, uh, there's an explosion. I think he gets shot at some point. Great. I don't know. I don't Great. really remember. It's no good. Uh, we're, we're getting up to the modern day, though. Ooh. 2013, there was two movies he did, both martial arts focused. One he directed called Man of Tai Chi, which has a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. I haven't seen it, but apparently it's okay. I don't even know that. Didn't even know that existed. Right Man down, of Tai Chi. Man of Tai Chi, yeah. Is uh, it like a Tai Chi workout video? Yes, it is. Yes. Huh. It's mostly about getting your knees high and your fists up, Mason. Ooh. That's how you do it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Somebody let us know. Yeah, please. If you've Things seen- that I want to know from this episode. <laughs> that, a good hacking film. <laughs> Man of Tai Chi. Man of Tai Chi. At Wikipedia Brown. Thank you. At if you Mr. Could. Sunday Movies. But last night, I actually watched 2013's 47 Ronin. I was going to say, that's the only other one. It's uh, it, That movie has had a budget of $175 million and made like 60 or something <laughs> no. like that. It's, it looks very expensive, but also it's got monster, CGI monsters and whatever. Does it look expensive, but weird, weird and glossy and unrealistic? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a bit of a combination of that. I'd imagine a lot of that is location and going over budget. They kicked the director at one point, so he was In his of, head. Yeah. <laughs> so he had a real trouble finishing the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but he had, um, and reading after that as well, too. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but it's... Because when I message you, I'm like, it's no good. It's mm-hmm. bad. And it didn't do well critically or commercially. But it's it's fine. What's it about though? Okay, so it's about um, uh, they call him a half breed. So maybe there was a bit of racism, residual racism Where's for two thousand. Where's Keanu Reeves from? I think he might. Is be, he Hawaiian? He might be Hawaiian. Yeah, or mm. might be quarter Hawaiian. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, he's as a kid, he's, he turns up in the woods in, in in Japan, and they're like, "This guy's a demon. He's got the mark of a demon on his head, or whatever." Uh-huh. So they raise him, even though they're like, "You're a half breed, and we hate you, and you you come from demons. <laughs> you can never be a samurai." Sounds like a bad childhood, if you ask me. Agreed. And all he wants to be is a samurai. Ooh. He wants to be the last samurai, or oh. just a samurai. Just a samurai. So uh, in there's a, a witch comes into 
comes into town. Oh, and intriguing. She's, she's in a different. Kingdom. Is it Rachel Vice again? No, it's a, it's an all Japanese cast. Oh, and Keanu Reeves. Is wherever this a great, he's is, from. Is this a Great Wall kind of situation? Uh no, I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so. But um, I know 47, 47 Ronin is like a Japanese kind of folk tale. I think it's actually it might even be based loosely on a real event. It may very well be. I think it is. You it, say all those things, but maybe it's a manga. You could, don't know. I no, I think it's a. 47 Ronin real? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> it was popularized. Hello. But it, yeah, no, it looks to be based on a real thing. Ooh. It's a legend. So, and, okay, and, sure. and the site and the graves, spoiler alert, of these 47 samurai, you can visit it now. You can go and. It's not really a spoiler. I mean, we probably figured that we're dead by <laughs> sure, now. Sure, sure. But, um,. <laughs> So do we see all forty-seven Ronin. You do. Oh, yeah. so they all have a personality. No. Nah. Oh, yeah. Some there's like there's a there's a roly poly one. There's a space one. There's yeah. a grappling hook one. <laughs> there's a karate chop one. There's one that doesn't trust him. And there's whatever. one that you can cut his hair. <laughs> so there's a bit where Keanu Reeves gets beaten with sticks because the. There's a tournament, and the the warrior from his town gets poisoned by the witch. So he puts on the armor and he goes to fight. So he fights this giant. Who later that you find out that the armor might be empty because it explodes and there's nothing oh. in it. Which is I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That could have been something. But so this is a magical. This is a this magical. Is Earth, yes, but it's a magical. It's a Japan. magical Earth. So anyway, they got to save their princess because their their leader's been killed, and the princess has to marry this evil guy who's working for a witch who's really a flying dragon. Oh yeah. Spoiler alert. Ah. And so they got to assemble the forty seven Ronin, and they need swords. Mm-hmm. So instead of going to a sword maker, Keanu Reeves takes them back to where he's from because he's from the land of monsters, which is basically men who the top half of their head is a bird, and and then, Why isn't the top half of him a bird then? <laughs> because he's he's a he, he was abandoned in the woods because his mum was Japanese, his father was an English sailor. Oh, and they and you leave was your either one of those a bird? No. Okay. And you and but he also learnt a little bit of magic, and by that I mean he can kind of move a little bit quicker, and he uses that twice in the entire movie. Nice. Once to kill a dragon and once to get a sword. And anyway, so they because they, and they're also instructed by the emperor, don't get revenge on. The the bad guy who killed you, poisoned your leader or whatever, but they do get revenge. They kill everybody, and then they have to forty seven ruin in themselves. Seppuku at the end. So huh. everybody except for one guy, they're like one of the soldiers. They pick out and they go, "You're the son of a great samurai who's about to kill himself. Your bloodline should continue, so you're free." Oh, so everybody else has to kill themselves. Jeez. But I'd imagine everyone else would have been like, "Hey, I'm the last of my bloodline. Like, yeah, my, right. This is my yeah. bloodline, all right." Kind of, he doesn't have a family. Mm. So, but he's also in love with the Japanese princess. But then he's like, "I'll find you in the next lifetime." Spoiler alert! He doesn't. Oh, oh, I was going to say, was there a post-credit sequence where the game was on? No, and he just arrives in the modern day, and he's like, "All right, I guess. no, it's done." Anyway, yeah. I'm still going to say Kian. No, unfortunately, yeah. yeah, it's it's not great, but it's not terrible. Look, based on your retelling, which might be bad, I'm going to say <laughs> Kian. No, as well. Okay, good. And the last one is John Wick. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we're up to at least. It's good. Yeah, it's yes. good, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's on all the bloody Netflixes and whatever. So if you get a chance, get into it, get mate. into it, mate. It's good. Any other? And ch- we'd love, we'd love to give an opinion on John Wick too. We'll, we'll let you know when it, when it comes out on TV here or whatever, or yeah. when we steal it off the internet. Yes, more likely, realistically. Yeah. yeah. Any other? Any other of note? I think I got most of them. Have you seen this movie, The Neon Demon? I haven't no, seen it yet, but he's in that. Yeah, it's got. Uh, it's the guy who did Drive. Yes. Yeah. Mm. No, I hear it's brutal. But they say that, but in his last one, somebody gets their hands cut off. So. You don't see it. I yeah. watched that scene. Yeah. I didn't watch the movie. I just watched that bit. Huh. Where Ryan Gosling gets his hands cut off. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Great. Anything else? No, that's it. Great. We talked about all the Keanu Reeves movies. Okay, here's a wrap-up. What do you reckon about Keanu Reeves as an action star? He's great. You know why? He puts his bloody back into it. He's yeah. 52. He trains. Is he really? Yes. There you go. Yes, I wow. know. Yeah. He trains. How much of the... How much of the my, Hollywood martial arts do you think he has retained? Well, you see, there's training videos of him for John Wick where he's doing, like, Kung, Kung Fu or whatever. Kung Pao. Kung Pao. He's doing Kung Pao into Kung the fist. Kung Pao and Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, I, I think maybe... You know, I mean, I remember seeing an interview with Matt Damon where they asked, like, hey, you, you got trained to do the Jason Bourne fights. Do you carry that over? And he's like, oh, no, for, like... For a very specific moment in time, I could do a very specific fight sequence. Yeah, right. But I can't actually do any yeah. l- like actual moves. But I think Keanu Reeves also 
he has a bit of a background in martial arts. Yeah. Yeah, as far I, as I, I know. I saw him on a, a Jay Leno or Conan or something like that. Did and he, he kick said, Jay Leno in his big face? Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. But he was like, if I'm in a, like if somebody came at me. Yeah. Because, you, you know, you, you're trying to sort of stop a six inches before anybody's face. Yeah. If, if he was like, if anybody came at me, I could legitimately defend myself and then I would run. Like I'd get to a point where I could <laughs> yeah. get out of this and then I would just take off. Okay, so, cool. Mm. I respect that. Me too. We should come at him. <laughs> yeah, right? And then when just he ru- see what happens. Uh, you go at him and then when he runs off, I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> you got a brick and a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming, did you, Keanu? But all in all, I think he's good, man. Mm. I genuinely, I think also he knows his limits. Mm-hmm. He's got, he's, he's very weirdly charismatic. There was a lot of time where like the for years people were like, he's a plank of wood and whatever. Uh-huh. And maybe that's why he was so appealing because you can kind of project emotions onto that's him. That's true, yeah. But you see him in an interview, he's pretty affable. He's mm. had some pretty tragic stuff happen to him in his life, like, mm. uh, um, which I'm... I don't know the exact details on, but I'm not going to elaborate, but you can look that up if you want. But. Did he bloody meet you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, mate. Here's up. Come on. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> anyway, in general, a big Kia, yes. I Even agree. though he's done a lot of, lot, of, lot of garbage. I think when we do another one of these, our rating system should still be Kia, yes, and Kia, no. <laughs> no problem. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to yeah. do it. Can't wait to see what Schwarzenegger gets. Kia, yes, probably. No, on the whole, until yeah. you hit like mid to late 90s. Mm, yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what it's time for then? What's it time for? What are we reading? Oh, what are we going to read? It's that famous segment. Do we do a theme? You know it. Put it in now. I'll, yeah, well. Okay, cool, man. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> I watched Legion. I haven't watched that yet. So this is the new... Is this Fox? Who's, yeah, who's put I guess. This out? Yeah, but it's the, by the people who did the Fargo TV series. Okay. One episode's out, right? Just yeah. one? Okay. I, if you, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Okay, don't. I bloody loved it, though. Did you really? I really liked What's it. What's good about it? Uh, it's not just an X-Men film. <laughs> Grace. It's, it's, it's really... It's what we've always, been wa- <laughs> we've always wanted. Something that isn't an X-Men film, but has the X-Men in it. Uh, the, without spoiling anything, it's very well acted. I like like uh-huh. The setting's really unique. Like, yep. halfway through, you're like, what is going on? And right. it all... There's not, like, things set up for the future. We're like, yo, you're never going to answer this. It answers a lot of questions. Okay. Um, and it makes a lot. It makes sense. It, it, it's also it's it is obviously linked to the X to the X Men. I don't know whether the X Men universe. I don't think it will be. It right. shouldn't be. It feels no. very different. But is his patronage revealed? Do we know that? Because in the comic books, he's the son of Professor yeah. X. Yeah. Uh, well, I I don't do can't say. No, 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 don't yeah. spoil it. Okay. But, um, okay. Here's a question for you. You can say spoil or don't spoil. In the comic books, he has multiple personalities, and each one has a different power. Right? Is that the case in this? I didn't. I didn't. It could be a factor. Yeah. Okay. Right. But it's not something that they really heavily press. In right. This. Because recently we've had Splits, of course, the James McAvoy or possibly Ewan McGregor film, <laughs> in which he has multiple personalities. There's too many, doesn't he? Mm, yeah. yeah. Have you seen that yet? No. Yeah. yeah. I, that's right. Because I? I spoiled the end. Why would it? I see it anyway? <laughs> There's no way I'd see it. It's okay, man. It's okay, all right. But this yeah. is intriguing. Has has this? Does he have crazy legion hair? He doesn't. He just has regular. He has hair. a variety of hairs depending on uh, what the, the the era that he's in. Okay, but no, it's 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 got a really good really good cast. It's what? look, man. I, I I think you'll really like it. I think okay. you really like it. Yeah, cool, man. Uh, uh, we'll talk about it maybe when you've seen it. Okay. Uh, what are you reading? Is that a is that a um is it a limited? Is it a, is it a I think it series? might be 8 or 10 or something. I can look okay. it up for you while you're telling me what you're going to read. Uh, what I read this week, I actually read a... I, I believe it, it was a Kickstarter comic book a few years ago. Mm-hmm. It's by uh, Gail Simone, yep. who, who did, who's done Nightwing and uh, Secret Six and bloody Birds of Prey and that sort of stuff. Disagree, but go on. Okay, but uh, it's called Leaving Megalopolis, mm-hmm. and it's kind of... Uh, it's very much in the vein of Irredeemable. Mark okay. Mark's Irredeemable, um, which we're both a big fan big of. Fan, yeah. So basically, it's... Uh, it's set in this city called Megalopolis, which was formerly the safest city in America because there were so many superheroes in it. Okay. But then this sinkhole opens up in the city and this gigantic monster-type creature, like this Cthulhu-esque monster, comes out and they all team up to defeat it. But afterwards, they all become like bloodthirsty lunatics. Okay. And so they have, they have set their sights on killing everybody in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, and there's like a military cordon around the city and the the story is set around like a group of survivors trying to make their way out of the city. That sounds great. It's fun. Has it just started? Uh, this is from 2012, but there's a new ver- there's a there's a sequel coming out that's out now. What's it called, sorry? 
Leaving Megalopolis. I will read that. And so there's a sequel called Surviving Megalopolis where a different team has to go back in to rescue somebody. Oh, sounds so dangerous. Yeah. Sounds intrigue. It's fun. Color me is intrigue. intriguing. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's, it's All right. real fun. I'll check it out. What else have I bloody, have I bloody read anything else, buddy? You don't have to have read anything Are you, ba- else, are you still on Riverdale? What are you doing yeah, with I'm Riverdale? Yeah, th- I'm up to date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's probably, like, it's... Um, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's Dawson's Creek. It's the OC. It's all yeah, those. That's yeah, that's true. Mm. Uh, hang on. It's me, Jughead. Yeah, it is. It isn't a Jughead. <laughs> bloody, it's so bloody Jughead. I was going to just bloody check my comics. I'll just see if I've read anything else. I don't mind. Okay, good. Boop, 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 boop. I actually reread uh, this week. I read Black Mirror. The, uh, what's his name? Dick Grayson is Batman. Oh, yeah, sure. Arc. Totally. Have you ever read yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, no, I have not. You totally read it. It's great. Okay, well. Yeah. Also, I read a bunch of stuff which I talked about on serious issues. So, oh yeah, and know, you got more. You got more good stuff. Than a lot bad. of it, I a yeah. lot of it. Oh, I don't know what the ratio is, but a lot of it I enjoyed. At yeah. least three, I'd say I really enjoyed. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Um, something I did read as well. This is a uh, the new Valiant universe. Uh there's a there's a series called Divinity Three, which is out now. That is, I read that. Well, I have not read that yet. It's great. But I've read I read Divinity One. Yeah, yeah. Just to just to I'm gonna I'm gonna. Run, Did you like it? Through. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, then you'll yeah. like the one. So I it's read. about it's essentially about a uh, a group of cosmonauts mm. that were specially selected to go out into the universe, go on a uh, lifelong mission into space to explore the far reaches of the universe. Sounds, something happens. Something great. happens to them. Yep. And then one of them comes back as sort of this divine godlike being. It's real, real, real cool. A Cthulhu type? No, just a regular. Just a regular kind regular, of. Just a regular godlike kind of guy, yeah. Yeah, pretty <laughs> good. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, ready for the next segment yeah, then? Yeah, it's letters. So we're going to do a letters thing. It always is, isn't it? It always is. Letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a take my way. Hang on, here right now. We're going to do letters. So there's a little option here that's just appeared on my YouTube app and it says save this video offline for later. <laughs> should I do that? Because I play this off my phone every uh, week from YouTube. You should I save it or should I re- keep the challenge? Is it actually going to save the video or is it just going to save the link? Oh, let's find out. Download this video. Wow. Well, that's your call, mate. No, nah, not now. Email in, listeners. <laughs> if you have an opinion on this weird you, thing that we do, if you do have every an, week. If you do have an opinion about the show or if you have a question, yeah. if you email weeklyplanetpod Pod at gmail.com. Mason is a crawling through the emails. I've been crawling he's, through the emails. He's finding, so, uh, yeah, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Also, if you hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter, also pick out a couple of tweets. Do you want to do the letter first? Or Here's the letter. This is from Gary first? Roper, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Gary Roper. Thanks, thanks for emailing, Gary. We appreciate hey, mate, it, hey, Gary. Gun to your head, gun to your balls. Okay, I like that, it. That's the challenge. What superhero would you cast Keanu Reeves in in a comic book movie? He was going to be a plastic man at one point. What? Yeah, that was the thing that was going to happen. Doesn't work for me at all. I don't know anything about plastic man, so I'm going to say it does work. Kia, yes. Yeah. A big Kia, yes from this fella. Now, Gary says not the best actor, but in good shape for 52 years old. You know he Agreed. is, Agreed. If I had to, my suggestion, Nemesis, it says. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, okay. Even the cop, you could put you can he could be the cop in Nemesis. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if you if you put him in an image comic or something or a valiant as opposed to like a like you make him a Green Lantern or a Yeah, right. or a whatever. Yeah, what do you reckon? I reckon 20 years ago he could have been Nightwing. That's absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And now he could be old Nightwing. Old Nightwing. Yeah. He older than Batman Nightwing. Yeah, right. Inexplicably. <laughs> Though he kind of looks younger than Ben Affleck yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if who, who, who would you cast him in the in Constantine the Batman again? Universe? Yeah, you, bring yeah. him back as Constantine. Bring him back. All yeah. right. You know, I wouldn't hate that. Neither would I. I That'd would. be great. We're supposed to be getting Dark Avengers at some point, aren't we? That, that's been on and off. Justice League Dark. Just sorry. Yeah. yeah Justice yeah. League Dark. I I didn't say Dark Avengers. Everybody. Just to yeah. so we're clear. <laughs> you definitely didn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah. No. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would not be upset. He, he suits the be- he suits that universe better than the TV version. Yeah, that's although. probably true. Yeah. It's gritty enough. He fights a big crab fish monster man, doesn't that's he? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Who else? Who else could he be? Uh, what mm. about a Mister Fantastic? No. You don't think so? Absolutely not. Why not? Because he's dumb. He's a big old dummy. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So put so, some techno babble in his mouth. Yeah, you're right. Roll yeah, that around in your it. brain. See so how that it. feels. I, he looks like him. <laughs> he could, yeah, all right. He's uh, about yeah. the right age. You just think you just want him to do stretchy stuff. I do. If I'm honest, let's have yeah. him be elongated, man. Let's have him be bloody. Now we're talking, mate. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, maybe flat man from the Great Lakes <laughs> Adventures. Flat Stanley Wait. from the from the kids t- book series. Yeah. Maybe he's not flat man. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? 
Maybe Alan Scott, maybe the first Green Lantern. Okay, sure. Work. He's old. Yeah, yeah. We say I, old, 52 is yeah, old. Yeah, that's right. Especially not in Hollywood years. I feel like also on the back of John Wick, maybe uh, the old superhero studios will come and knock in. Yeah, maybe. What about a, a, a blood bloodshot? No, it wouldn't work. You know Bloodshot's too bulky. Yeah, fair enough. But there's different versions of him, but yeah, fair enough. Okay. What about Hawkman? Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Disagree. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Caveman? He's kind of a caveman looking dude. Or is Turok in the modern day? <laughs> he's in the modern day, yeah. Okay. He's a, he's a Native American man. All right, fair. Yeah. Well, then maybe Keanu Reeves is also that. He's like got that Johnny Depp kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, where, where, where he's are ethnically you from? ambiguous, yeah. That's right. Look, we've given everybody some great options there. <laughs> you know what? Let's just make him Shazam. Because we don't have a Shazam yet. I'm just seeing what people. Some people have. Uh, there's like a Tony Stark. Nah. You don't think you could do a Tony Stark? Uh, Techno Babble again, I guess. Yeah. You could make him Shazam. And then, because there's enough footage of him to youthify him, yeah. So yeah, you can make yeah. him like a teen Billy Batson, or like a like a Billy Batson in his early twenties, maybe. Okay, sure. And then when he shazams and he's Captain Marvel, do you think there's regular era Keanu, fifty two th- era Keanu? Do you think there's any point in his life where he could have been Superman, where he could have made a good Superman? Ah, uh, no. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's more a hair issue than anything else. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if that's if yeah. you say so, mate. Mm-hmm. I think that's. I think that's that. That's a question's done, isn't I it? I think so. All right, what's we next? definitively answered the question. What about Deathstroke or Deadshot? If you got rid of Will Smith, ah, uh, no, 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 don't like it either. You don't think he'd be a good uh, Deathstroke? Needs you more could bulk. do the sword play. Needs more bulk though. Yeah, he could. He could bulk. All right. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't I'm know. happy with the Deathstroke casting anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. But, but yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a tweet. Tweet. I did it. I made oh. the. Do- <laughs> Should I edit that out? No. Or I live in shame. Yeah, live in shame. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. This is from uh, Metal Eugenio. So Metal that, um, Eugenio. <laughs> hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. Uh, which superhero, superhero has the best supporting cast? Like parents, friends, girlfriend, etc. Yep. It's like Spider-Man or Batman, I guess. What it's do you Batman. Think? More than Spider-Man, he's got a good supporting cast. I like Batman's supporting cast because he's always like, I work alone, but there's like 40 he's of them. He's got so many people. So many. He's got an in- international yeah, he's got like network. A, he's got like a garage full of helpers now yeah. and tech dudes and whatever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But every now and then, maybe he'll just go back to just him. What do you think about like, uh, what do you think about the, the, uh, the Flaroverse? Of uh, those guys. Who has the least who has the most annoying team and who has the least annoying team? You know what? If you swapped them out, I probably wouldn't notice immediately. There you go, it would take yeah. me a bit to be like, was it yeah. Cisco in the other? Right. I like the Flash's probably the Flash. Okay, I like I kinda sure. like his team. Who do you like? I think I like Arrow's team better. Oh well well. Felicity. Yeah, yeah. But not the Felicity we're talking about earlier, a different Felicity. Diggle. Diggle's in there. <laughs> red arrow red arrow. Red arrow. Speedy. Couple of couple others, his sister or whatever. Yeah, some dudes also have bow and arrows. <laughs> Love it. Sometimes the the bad guy from Doctor Who. Yeah, sometimes he's. What's in his it. name? John Mer- Barrowman. Yeah, mm. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you think Batman? It's Batman. He's got he's got an assortment of Robins. Some of which are dead. Some of which are evil. Some of which are dead and they've come back and they're good now. Okay. Ah, uh, you got you got Oracle slash. But Batgirl. just because he's got a lot, does that make him the best? Best. I mean, these are, you know what, to be fair though, a lot of these are really good characters. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, I think Superman has a good supporting cast of like, especially new Superman, he's got a kid. Uh-huh. You know, he's married or whatever. He's got, he's got his work life. and he's... Apparently there's no Jimmy Olsen yet. Oh, maybe he's been shot in the head in the desert. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's canon now. Yeah, great. Yeah. It's cross all mediums. Yeah. You're right. I think I I think Jimmy Olsen's a great supporting character if they ever bring him back. Of course they will. will they? Do you reckon they'll bring him back in a sexy way or in an argyle vest way or both? You can do both. Sexy. Ar- I reckon sexy ar- argyle vest, no shirt underneath, <laughs> rippling abs. Do you ever want to see like Jimmy Olsen come back and he gets turned into a giant lizard and Superman has to fight him or something? Yes. Okay. That's what he's for. That is what he's for, isn't he? Yeah. Jimmy Olsen's been replaced with a robot mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Great. This is from Daniel Worthington. Hey, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Hey, dudes. Oh. Did either of you watch them? Uh, watch Monkey back in the day? If so, any musings on it? No one ever seems to talk about it. You remember Monkey Magic? I remember Monkey Magic, yeah, I sure. Vag- didn't really watch it, but I know what it is. A man who was exploded out of a rock into existence. Correct. Uh, weird 
English dubbing fights his way across a very piss poor looking <laughs> Japanese land. Is it Chinese, Japanese? Chinese, I think. Okay, sure. Mm. And he can fly in a cloud and he can fight with a stick. He's and got he a can, stick. He can replicate himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pigsy. Pigsy. One uh, of the characters was maybe a woman but also maybe a man. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I didn't really Look, watch most, it. Most, mostly we see it as ironic T-shirts now, I think. Yeah, totally, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, were you a fan of it back in the day? Absolutely, but I could not tell you anything about it for a million dollars. I know that Monkey's Yearning, which was one of the last episodes that aired, was on December twenty. Sorry, December two thousand and four. That can't be right. I think you're thinking of something else. That's what it says here. Maybe I mean, obviously, that was filmed like a long time ago, but the dub might have then arrived in two thousand and four. Yeah. No, it's okay. No, it's also got here their first episode, nineteen seventy eight. Final episode, nineteen eighty. So it didn't even go for very long. Right. Okay. Let me do the. I remember. Or was it a whistle? Pigsy had a rake. Anyway, it's reminiscing talk here on the Weekly Planet. Pigsy had a rake. I get it. Not nah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Any more musings? Look, I'll watch some of it on YouTube later and I'll give you a proper evaluation next week. Okay. Note it down. I don't believe you will. I won't. I'll forget. You know, I'm, I'm going to treat everybody to the monkey magic theme song. Okay. I'm not going to blast it and everybody. I'm just going to play it. Okay, cool. Get ready, Mason. I'm ready. This is boring. God, TV was boring, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. The four worlds formed again and yet again as endless eons wield and pass. God, this is a really long intro. Time and the pure essences of heaven, the moisture of the earth, the powers of the sun. Ugh, move it along. <laughs> Where's the monkey magic? Fucking insane. A, an egg just came out of a rock and it's rolling up a hill. Yeah. And it's about to hatch and I'm presuming monkey magic. As foretold in the prophecy. <laughs> but it's also like one of the first things that ever happened on Earth, it seems. Mm-hmm. Did he leap out of the egg? Did monkey leap out of the egg? And he looked like a monkey. Yeah. So. Okay, we've all had enough of this, I think. Absolutely, I had enough of it before you started. <laughs> also, he was in a full monkey outfit when he came out. Because he he's that? a monkey. <laughs> no, but he's mon- <laughs> but is he? No, 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 no. We've discovered so something. We've, we've discovered a fundamental misunderstanding <laughs> that you have about the universe. Monkeys aren't humans wearing little monkey suits. Monkeys look like that. <laughs> no, they I know. They genetically look what like I'm that. What I'm saying is, so he's full monkey under that his regular yes. clothes. Yes. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I have learned something today. Yeah. Right. All right, great. That's the show for this week. We did it. Yeah, we did. Mm. Uh, next week, dunno. But uh, we do have that charity thing if you people want to. Oh yeah, that'd be we, great. If, we mentioned yeah. it up top. We won't. Mm-hmm. We banged on about that for quite a bit. But that's all linked below. Yeah. If you could help out, that would be. That yeah. Would what be are we awesome. going to do next week? Assuming we get any any movies or TV shows <laughs> that America gets next week, who knows anymore? Who does though? Uh. Like while you're going through all our details, I'll quickly check the, the oh, movies. Oh yeah, for the week. let How us know. Uh, let's see. You can find us at Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp. And I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I'm at Mr. Sunday. You movies. can also follow the Weekly Planet. That's our friend Robert Collings, and he yes, uh, yes. he knows more about us than we do. Yeah. He also does great videos on his uh, YouTube channel. So he find Rob Collings. I did that really good Spider-Man one. That's which right. I enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, let's see. If you want to uh, help support the show. Yep, I do. Once, once you're done with charity, obviously don't. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously, you can go to bloody. You oh, can train go to... spotting's out soon. Ooh, awesome. Is that out already in America? I don't think so. You can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Uh huh. Donate a, donate a buck or two a month if you like. Or don't you mind can, if I do. You can Mason. click on that Amazon affiliate link that's in our episode description. You can click through there and you buy, if you want to buy Monkey Magic on DVD <laughs> don't or mind 4K if I do. Blu ray. <laughs> Just to just to see that that monkey fur in operation, you can do that. You click there, uh, you pay the same price, and we get. Why is he got a somehow. man's face? Then you're telling me he's a monkey, but he's got a man's face. 
monkeys are just like us, James. And they're not. They they're share clearly... they share ninety nine point nine 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 percent of our DNA. But you know what? Most creatures... when they eat one of us, because they're <laughs> monsters. They're soulless monsters. <laughs> they're not good, are they? No, terrifying. But most creatures share like ninety nine percent of our DNA. That's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyways, Otherwise, you're just a jellyfish. What was I up to? Uh, I don't know. I cut you. Amazon off. affiliate link. We've got some t shirts on, right. on 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 tpublic dot com. Yeah, Great designs man. there. Thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our theme songs. Oh, thank you to our friend uh, at Free Cheesy Bread on uh, Twitter. He got the Grab That Gem tattoo last week. Yes. Oh, you wanted to see the re- you wanted to see the rest of his tattoo, didn't you? Yeah. So uh, uh, last week he, he t- took a photo of that gem, the Grab That Gem tattoo, and above that he apparently he had what looked like a front loading washing machine with like the Great Wave coming out of it. Sweet. Uh, that is correct, apparently. Um, S- he said, uh, the wash has no story behind it. I apologise. May I please be the official bad decision of the podcast? <laughs> Absolutely, you may. Uh, and above that, uh, above the washer, he's got a tattoo of Mr. T eating what appears to be breakfast cereal, but it's actually buttons. <laughs> what does so, that mean? Who knows? This it All of these raise more questions than I answer, <laughs> and I love them. That's so, so good. Good work, buddy. Yeah. Thank you for that. I should also point out I finally did my Walking Dead video. What you oh, call my magnum opus? Your, the Chinese democracy of yeah. your life. The, it's up. I'm done. You're, it. you're Duke Nukem forever. I, I rewatched it and I'm like, I don't even know if I agree with all of this anymore. Huh. But I'm standing. No, I do. I think no. There's one thing where I said nobody important ever dies. Uh-huh. That that's not that's not actually true. I should have said nobody I care about dies. <laughs> but also that could be anybody on that show. Yeah. Yeah. And true for your real life as well. You know it, mate. Mm-hmm. Can't wait till you're dead. <laughs> Nah, we're all right, though. Yeah. That, is that everything? Oh, yeah, that's it. That we is. did it. All yeah. right, we'll see you guys next week. Grab it, gem, you guys. Bye. Bye.